John here. Okay, back with another live stream. And first thing, let me get uh, everything checked out. Hey, Don here. Okay, sure, back with another live stream. To. And first thing, and, uh, let me get. Uh, yeah, I'm using a headset on this checked out. Now. Hey, you down here. <coughs> okay, so, back with another live stream. Have to do it that way. And it's working, so let's get back over here. So, I've got. A little uh, delivery here that I want to open up first, and then and this is this video is going to be about the ventilation for my server closet behind me there, the one on <laughs> that side. That's the closet. <clears throat> I've got the server in there and running, and <clears throat> I'm working on the ventilation. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, um, I wanted to open this box first and check this out. So uh, let's get that going. <clears throat> and uh, trying to see, but that's really taped up nice. You don't see that too often. <clears throat> taped up so good, you kind of hard to tell where to. where the seam is. Try a new camera. Oh, okay. Oh, well, let's try this. I want to just see what this looks like. I just set that up that way. Yeah, that's well, that's um, kind of. I don't know. We'll see which one's better. <laughs> that gives you a better view into the box. Not that I wouldn't be holding it up anyway, but but uh, it's taping itself to my finger. I'll get them out. And then uh, go back to the other camera because it's a little bit clearer, maybe a little better view if I don't if I don't leave that up there. Let's see. Yeah, I think I'll use the tape net. My my knife, I get, it gets too well used to cut tape very good. And this this is that kind of shipping tape that sticks to everything. Yeah, I better just cut it off. I was gonna fold, fold it over on, yeah, I think, no, nah, it's gonna stick to everything. I know, I'm making a mountain out of a molehill. <clears throat> That's what I do. Okay, so. Now, maybe I'll actually show you what I'm getting, what I got now. Boy, this is really no complaints on that. Doing a good job of packing. <laughs> it's like one of those Christmas presents that's a, that they wrap a box inside of a box, you know? So they, I used to love doing that kind of stuff when I was a kid. And by the time I got grown, I didn't even want to wrap packages anymore. <laughs> I used to go finding boxes and box inside a box. And, one time I put a brick in a box and then, cause the present was big. So I put a brick in a box and and uh, the present was, you know, in a closet or somewhere. And, and uh, so the per whoever, I don't remember who it was for now, but, or if it was actually something I bought or my mom bought for one of my brother or sister, you know, but uh, I didn't buy a whole lot as a kid. I didn't have. <laughs> We didn't have lots of money. Kids didn't have lots of money when I was growing up. We get 50 cents a week for allowance when we were kids. <clears throat> when we started getting allowance. But uh, anyway, uh, I think it got up to it. We got a cost of living raise to dollar fifty by the time I was a teenager. <laughs> and that I saved that up for two or three years, and that's how I bought my first car. Hundred sixty dollars, nineteen sixty-two Buick Invicta. 
to 110 miles an hour all the way from Azle to Lickworth. You had to slow down for that last curve at the Lickworth Bridge and you slow down to 90. Okay, uh, I'm reading HP DL380 G6 G7 hot plug fan module. That's what I got. And I wasn't expecting it to be in a static bag and everything. Boy, this place. I'm not surprised though. I found, I've never, you know, I found it. I was searching for these fans and I found this particular. I'd like to open that in a way that. Not, not going to do that. In a way that I can uh, kind of, you know, close it back up pretty good because I'm not, I don't, I don't have any bad fans on my server yet. I want these uh, mostly. I have two ideas. The main reason I got them uh, is, is so I wouldn't uh, be stuck without them, you know, if I end up needing one. But, uh, I'm trying to get, open it, it's not going to reseal, but I was trying to open it the best way I could, but it didn't, that wasn't very, <laughs> I guess that was the best way I could. Um, there we go. Now I thought, let's get the other one out. I'll get my endoscope down here in a minute and we'll show. <laughs> I, I was starting to comment on the, what I see, but I'll wait until I can show it to you here. Get this other one open. I really should test them. And maybe, I guess, I don't know. I'm not, I'm, yeah, I was trying to remember. That said hot plug on there, but hot swappable is what, um, you know, that's what everybody calls it. But that one's really taped up. Can't even find, get under any of the tape. There we go. Oh, that one's actually coming loose. Oh, yeah, that's kind of how the other one did. But I cut it. It was already kind of loose, and I cut it in the middle, thinking I would tape it back onto the plastic. But that didn't uh, work. Didn't work out. So, uh... Yeah, somebody put a long piece of tape on there. Yeah. I was trying not to drop stuff in the floor or anything. I do it trying not to. There we go. I used to kind of save this stuff in case I needed to use it, but we order, we've ordered so much stuff for many years now. Uh, we just generally, we pretty much always stole it away. And then if I do need a box and some packing material, then I don't, don't, don't always have it. <clears throat> okay, so. Yep, it says the same thing on it. Now these are still, the reason I'm, I'm surprised they're in this bag, I mean, this looks like it would be a new, that looks like the part number on it. Uh, well, I guess they got, a, they got a really good, you know, part tracking system evidently in this, this uh, place. This is a server supply place, a server place that sells servers and parts, but they're supposed to be used you know, re refurbished or reconditioned or whatever they call it. You know, everybody wants to come. Now they can't say, if to, reconditioned and some other thing they say. They don't, I think everybody got a, you know, refurb kind of gets a bad taste. Oh, okay, there's the connector. It's a bad taste in people's mouths anymore, I think. And, oh, but, okay. That's uh You want to know what I'm talking about, don't you? Okay, so let's get uh, that in the scope. 
I think it'll reach. Yeah, I've already got it turned on and ready to go, so hopefully all I'm going to have to do is just turn it on and start using it. Okay, let's go to the endoscope. Nothing there. Okay, let's get something there. All right, now. It's a little tight. There we go. Guess that's just right. Height wise. It's not going to be right side up to the picture unless I turn it which way? Sideways to me, or kind of crooked, but that's all right. All right, so <clears throat> Nidec Ultra Flow 12 volt DC, 2.45 amps, product of Vietnam. That's what made me go, oh, at the first time. Uh, so, yeah, and um, let's see, what does this one say? And there's the part number. Okay. 46 HP part number replaced with spare fan. Circle so and so. Okay. And I don't remember the numbers. And there's the connector. I didn't know where the connectors were. I had never. I pulled one, one or two of mine out before, but I put them right back in. And uh, I, I thought maybe there was like contacts on either side inside of the yellow, uh, red. Inside of there, or something that you couldn't see, but you could actually uh, maybe wire to one of those. There's, but there's so many contacts, you'd really have to figure out. I don't know if they're all populated. I can see silver in one of them. <coughs> it makes me kind of wonder. <coughs> oh, it's just the way it looks. Yeah, one, two, three. And see goldy gleam, gleaming. I think maybe w one of them is not actually. Uh, I think maybe this one right there doesn't have any contacts in it. To, that's pretty typical, you know, with uh, electrical things and computers and a lot of things, cars. They just use a standard. Uh, Come now, I can't get in the picture. Boy, if I guess if I would, there we go. I was confused. Okay, uh, I finally realized. Okay, look at the the camera and see where it's pointing. <laughs> look at the camera. See, it's leaning to the out some, and that's fine. It gives me more room to move this around, but. I, finally realized I'll put it right under it and, and then you'll get close and then you could find it <laughs> okay so still have to turn it this camera is a on a very stiff cable and there's just no way I gave up on fighting it at, after the first couple of weeks of having it it's just it's going to go where it's going to go when you move it you might end up with it just you know the way you want it and you might end up with it the other way you don't even know until you look at it in on the you know in, it's a USB camera look at it in the computer Anyway, this one pretty much looks like it says the same thing on it. These are really good-looking, well-made fans, I'll tell you that. The other ones, you know, these are, I'm sure these are just like the other ones. They sure look to me like the other ones. Look at those letters upside down. Now, this one would be more what you would ex I would expect. This one, made in China. Um, 12-0 DC, 3.30 amps. Hmm. That one was 2.45 amps, I believe. Uh, Delta Electronics. I bet that used to be made in America. Either that, well, of course, they always like to make, give, give those American-sounding names to their products, too. But Delta is a pretty common name for American products, you know, like companies and it was 2.45 so they're, I'm surprised they're I'm surprised they're two different brands but I guess not because I mean they just they harvest these out of <laughs> that's one of those terms that people use nowadays now I, 
it's, it's, it's came right off the tip of the tongue, didn't it? You know, instead of hunting and instead of, uh, well, I won't go into that. You know what I'm talking about, probably. <clears throat> hunting terms sure have changed. Used to you harvest grain, now you harvest a deer, you know, stuff like that. And that's one thing I never heard anybody say in my whole life until the last few years, harvest an animal instead of saying uh, killed me a deer, you know, got me some deer sausage, you know. <laughs> usually they'd say I killed the buck or they don't usually say kilt unless they just want to, but some people really do talk that way all the time out here in Texas, but most of us would just do it for the fun of it. <clears throat> okay, so uh, now let's go over here. That's it. And what I was thinking about, the reason I was looking at the connectors and everything, I guess they're both the same. I meant to look at both of them real good. Okay, so one of them, kind of, I, I, I kind of, oh yeah, I'll show you where I got them before I go. I was going to go show the server, but uh, looks like it. Why did it, oh, because I raised it up. I was like, how did it get out of focus? Okay, this one, I don't know why I raised it up. Oh, because I see, show more of the fan. Oh, I see all the wires, yeah. I guess I thought the different speeds, I didn't, I figured there would be too much. I figured there'd be a positive, a negative, and a sense wire. But it's got, oh, it runs on different, different voltages, runs different speeds. I bet you, yellow in, in computers is 12 volt, red is, wait, blue is usually, no, red is, yeah, red, the standard, general, yeah, it's pretty much the standard. They pretty well stick with it with computers. Yellow is 12 volt, red is 5 volt, positive 5 volt. They have negative voltages in computers, too. Black is ground, green, it could be a sense wire, or it can be green and purple and other colors like that can be all, a lot of different things. I'm trying to see, I think there's more. I can only see that because of the, either that or if I stick my magnifying glass down there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Where's that connector? Okay. One, two, three, four, five. There's five connectors and one that's empty. Must be another wire up under there that I can't see. Started to kind of try to move them around to see, but. He didn't really want to move. One, two, three, four. Uh, I don't know. Maybe there's two of those are, are grounded. That's what they'll do a lot. They'll run one ground wire and then hook it to two connectors. But uh, see, this is my first server to own. I've been really interested. I've been, I was sort of getting interested in them in the early 2000s, but let's see. Yeah, red, black, green, and yellow. And this is the uh, Viet one made in Vietnam. Yeah, so there's only four wires. But there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, places you can have connectors. But that one in the middle towards the tab there, that doesn't have any. Uh, I can see it's no connector. Right there. You can see the uh, connector. That light might make it reflect a little more. It doesn't really make it any better. Yeah, you can kind of see what I'm talking about, I think. So, I was thinking about using one of these, and I thought after I after I was got them, I thought, really, I should have got more than just two, because I got them for two dollars and fifty cents each, and uh, I think it was free shipping. But get over here and get on the web browser, and I'll show you. I want to put my endoscope camera back up there, <clears throat> which you don't know. It doesn't matter to you. I don't have to tell you that now. But let's see, where did I get them? Okay, I didn't get them on Amazon. <laughs> I looked on Amazon, and I think I 
found one or two on Walmart. I started looking on Google, sh you know, shopping. Let's see. Found my folder. Um, this is the server I have, since I'm right here, I'll show it. Oh, and that's where I bought the server. That was, uh, let's see. That's their profile. That's not the server. There. And, uh, <clears throat> and no, had no problems with it. Um, when I, it's not, you can't buy it from right here, but I did see that you, you're not seeing as many of them as you are. You were seeing them everywhere. One thing is it did one. The only pro, only thing that was not as expected as. Uh, there's no, de I didn't really care that much, but I think I might have figured out before I bought it. I don't remember now, but that it didn't have a DVD. I think I didn't. I think I just kind of let the picture tell me it was going to have a DVD drive. I, I don't need it, but has eight came with eight hard drives, 1.46 uh, gigabyte. Two, and now the picture showed 750 watt fans, and I got 460 watt fans. Uh, and I ended up buying two 750 watt fans because. Uh, I, I ended up buying an 8 gigabyte video card for it that needed 150 watts. And uh, the, the 460s would have done it, but it would have been the absolute max they can handle. And I didn't want to push them like that. So here's, you know, where all the fans go in this machine. Well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I've got, I've got eight now. And that is how it came in a box, just exactly like that. It was really packed good. But uh, I paid uh, right with, you know, I, it, the way they priced it when I bought it, I think it was 260 plus 30 something dollars shipping and maybe a little tax. It was like a couple of bucks under $300. Uh, saw another one. You're seeing a lot of other models and at good prices. <clears throat> but uh, that is not what I got on here to show you. But. Uh, there's the power supplies I got. They still have them. Uh, they're twenty nine dollars now. They're like I think I paid twenty eight, and uh, for two of them, they're used and they've been no problems with them. Trying to find. Uh, I'm not seeing. Did I not ever re? Uh, Looks like I've reorganized it. I do not see those fans. Oh, remember? Oh, I must have put them in their own. Or that company must have done that. Now I've lost my place. There we go. New server parts. I thought I had put them in the, but I did do a bunch more searching on that site. So either I put them in my general parts folder, or I gave a, I might have given a folder for it. Where's the box that tell me the name of the company? Can't remember it. I started. I thought when I, I started thinking maybe I'd show you the sticker, but it's really not. This is much better if I can just find it. Tech Buyer U.S. It, they've got them. They got sites for all different countries. So. Uh, T C H B U Y E R. This one has a shipping center, you know, in a warehouse, I guess, in New Jersey. <coughs> so, you know, it didn't take long to get here. And I... <coughs> I'll go ahead and sort that by name. I didn't expect to uh, have trouble finding it. 
I might have gotten mixed up and put it under computer parts or something instead of. I'm just going to go. Let's see. They're definitely not there. I know why I don't see it. Because I didn't use this computer. I uh, used my server. Okay, so um, well, I just found the, what the website is, so I can at least go there. Let's see. I don't know if it's dot. I'm not used to doing. I'm going to see if it's .com or what. Yeah, I think this is it right here. I'll know when I get to the site. Yeah. So, uh, oddly enough, see they have, there's this countries where they have sites for, <clears throat> have their, their, uh, their, their money on each site. Um, use their, their type of money, but yeah, I see, well, there's a picture, I never paid any attention to that, but I guess that's one of the, picture of one of the warehouses they're proud of. Um, most of it has, I, a lot of it has a three-year warranty, pretty much everything I paid any attention to, and it, yeah, I said free, it was free shipping. What I was going to say is, you know, I made an account on there, and if I signed, if I sign in, then, uh, I never did. Uh, try, after I got the box, I tried to find my order history. I didn't never find it, a place to find it. It's probably there, and I just didn't see it. But uh, and I, I let sit around here a couple, three days uh, because I wanted to do it in the video. But uh, and they have, you know, they have servers. They got lots and lots of servers. But uh, let's see. They do have a DL three eighty G seven. They have all kinds of parts. What's that? Yeah, there's one. I'm pretty sure that's a quad core. Mine's a six core with sixty four gig of RAM and eight hard drives. I didn't. This is the cheapest one I've seen on here. It's probably basically empty. We'll see. Oh, it's telling you what it's got right there. Yeah, two point one three quad cores, four gig. RAM, yeah, 460 watt power supplies. That's not too bad there, 168 bucks. But it has tax. Oh, yeah, it shows you what the tax is going to be on every one of them. Something like little video fans wasn't much. Uh, six core, I think it's only one six core, though. I have two six core. 112 gigabyte of RAM. So this, I didn't see these cheaper ones. All I kept seeing was stuff for $2,000 or maybe 800. Mine are 2.53 gigahertz processors, two of them. That's not so bad. Uh, I'll put at least one link to it in here, so. It'll be parts, there we go. Oh wait, I have a, another, I had another folder for those servers, but general info, well, I'll just put it there because that's for, yeah. They're really not too bad. Uh, a little bit higher, it looks like, than uh, trying to see if I saw one. See, there's some fans right there. That must be like a, it's like a whole kit of something. I don't know what, maybe that, oh, that's probably fans and heat sinks, I bet. Yeah, that box is probably for the heat sinks. See, now there's one, 380 Gen 10. I guess that's what I was seeing was in the other ones that were higher. But, uh, and I did see some rack rails for about thirty-six dollars too for it. And uh, 
Let's see if that's got two of them or one of them. That's 112, oh, 12 gigabyte of RAM. I think it's one processor. Oh. That didn't work. I've been having that happen. Well, I've been having it on the, uh, <coughs> on my server, on my new, my new Fedora 32 system. This is Fedora 24, 28. Uh, and I haven't, you know, I didn't, like, what I keep getting is when I'm trying to watch videos on YouTube, they'll, especially if they're really new, like just came out a couple hours ago or, or to something like that a few hours ago, it'll say you can't play HTML5, you don't have the right stuff. And I've looked and looked and I finally figured out that you turn on the uh, D play DRM content and then it'll get installed automatically. And it finally, and well, it t it's a called uh, Google... Google's Web Divine Player is what it's called. It's not called HTML5 Player or anything. So anyway, I want to. Uh, anyway, it didn't work right away. This, none of this stuff's working. Maybe I'm hitting Control to get it to open up in another tab. Maybe that's breaking it. Yep. No, I don't know what's going on there. None of it's showing up. Well, anyway, that's not what I want to do. So uh, make sure. Our video's working good. Okay. <clears throat> um, let's see. Okay, the fans. Uh, I know you can hot, you're supposed to be able to hot swap them. I'm a little nervous about doing that for no good reason. So, but the server's over there running, and I did, I left it. Well, I turned it on this probably about 2 in the afternoon when I got on the computer. 2, two, two to 33, whenever it was. And, uh, of course, now it's in the a.m., but uh, I didn't get to about noon today, so. Uh, so I'm going to grab my camera four there. I fixed my problem with my USB cable. Um being loose where I couldn't pick up the camera and move it while it's plugged into the computer. I can, I've got like a 16-foot cable on it. Let's see. I'll use that for, to show you what I'm talking about since I decided to mention it. Still want to be careful. But, uh, <sighs> yeah, I figured it would not want to unravel good. So, um, I'll try to bring it up close to this camera. Maybe you can see it. Can't see it too good. Maybe you can see it well enough to tell what I'm talking about here. You can kind of see that hot's not on there. I put, I uh, I attached it with, I plugged it in and then hot snotted the heck out of it with that uh, hot glue. So, uh, let it dry overnight. I should have unround this cord before I plugged it in. It's all wanting to wind itself back up. <clears throat> Didn't think about that, did I? All right, so. Everything wants to go wonky on me. <coughs> <coughs> now, I'm going to uh, switch. I just had to make an order for myself, didn't I? Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's head over here to the uh, that chair. Makes a nice little panning mechanism, doesn't it? I stepped on the cord. First, that would have knocked it loose. So uh, it's been on since about two thirty. It's not hot in there. It was getting. I was okay. So I've got a vent, and I haven't shown it or anything in this video. So. Okay, that's, that's a floor fan. I hung it with, from zip ties. Um, and the light, well, I've got to, I can't reach the bulb. I unscrewed it so it wouldn't be on all the time because the power is, uh, you know, I've got one of those adapters in there with two plugs on it, and then you screw the bulb in. And then when you, when you turn this, pull the string to turn it on and off, it turns everything on and off. So I couldn't do that. I didn't think... I didn't have that in my head when I set it all up. See, I put a vent, what I put up there is a dryer vent. And there's, that's a two before, but I ended up, 
first I just put it in there, and, and once I was screwed into a tube of four in the attic, you know, or a tube of six, a rafter, part, part of the rafters, you know, um, <clears throat> and uh, the other side was just in the sheetrock, and it, you know, it, it's just, this is the house was built in 1962 or so. And that sheetrock is really brittle, you know, and weak. So uh, that wasn't going to cut it. And I had uh, I had cut a piece of air conditioner filter and put over it and taped it up. And I didn't have a fan in there yet. And I was kind of hoping that it would that it would. You might be able to hear that thing a little bit. It's it's working pretty good right now. But after it runs that many hours, it'll get kind of warmed up and kind of stay about at that that noise level. And if I watch a whole bunch of videos for, you know, especially if I watch, well, yesterday I, I noticed, uh, actually with that Lenovo, I can't watch it, uh, 4K videos, but I noticed one of my videos off this camera right here, which was supposed to be 4K. Uh, it showed up as 4K, and I started watching it, and it started ramping it up. And I got an 8 gigabyte video card, two 6-core processors, 64 gig of RAM, I got 200 megabits of download speed. I should be, I would th thought, you know, I'd be able to watch those all day long. But it kept playing, um, you know, 30 seconds or even less, and then caching. You know, it would stop. The, the audio would keep going, but the video would stop, and then it would catch up, and it kept doing that over and over. And uh, <clears throat> I was really surprised and disappointed in that. And uh, <clears throat> so anyway, I quit. I quit trying to do it. Yeah, I, put, I went on down to the the next one under 4K, and then the one below that's 1080p is what I generally watch everything in. But I I noticed on the Lenovo here, um, it's always going down to 720. I'll get you know, YouTube kind of goes even if you change it manually, it'll go back to auto. You know, and. Uh, and it aggravates me when it's 720 because, you know, the, any text on the screen, or especially, usually I notice it when I'm, I'm, you know, watching through my videos to rename them and put a description in them. And I'm always doing desktop stuff. You know, desktop videos is part of my videos most of the time. So um, <clears throat> I, uh, I'm always getting aggravated with it switching back. And uh, usually I put it back on 1080 and, and it, uh, it might take it a, 20 seconds to kind of catch you know bring in enough cash to start playing smooth then it's fine but with that 4k i could not make it i couldn't sit and watch it in 4k i don't know if i didn't try any other videos that i really don't pay attention as long as it looks good to me i just watch it you know <coughs> but uh whether it's mine or somebody else's <coughs> so <sighs> here's what i think i want to do um, I mean, I could get in there, open that case, and uh, I'm thinking to make it's kind of going to be a bunch. It's going to take a. It's going to be time consuming. Well, I think I should do it. I just really am a little nervous about hot swapping them. Uh, you know, used fans from a company you've never bought from before. So I could because, <clears throat> and you know, the servers have all kinds of mechanisms in the electronics to protect themselves. But I would think that if you shut it down, put one in there, and I was not, I don't do two because then you don't know which one's messed up if something's messed up. Do one, boot it back up. See, this is going to take a lot of time. But it should, if it was something really wrong with it, I would think it would stop instantly and not even... Uh, boot up but if you pull one out and shove another one in with it already running I'm afraid that it, it might say there's a dead short in it or something it might blow out something in the server motherboard before it has a chance to react could happen either way uh, <clears throat> and these are I don't really see a, a easy way to figure out well yeah there is Figuring out which, uh, what I was thinking about using them at one of these as a, as a, a as an exhaust fan. I bought one and it ran two, it was doing the job, but after it ran two and a half hours, it started rattling like crazy, and I'm going to show it in a little bit. 
and I couldn't use it. I had to take it down. It was all installed, all looked real nice. I'm, I'll show you right quick <clears throat> while I'm jabbering on here. Get it and put it over here and show you. <clears throat> so, and I, I spent four days or something trying to get everything all set up. And when I find wearing myself out doing it, you know, working up over my head. And then <clears throat> that was the outcome. And I was, I was real happy when it was working. And then when it did that, uh, it, it, I mean, it was, it was really loud and just not going to be able to handle that, you know. I mean, one thing, you know, with your ventilation fans in the bathroom, you know, <clears throat> they, they just rattle through the, the attic and everybody can hear them. And they, uh, ours, they're brawn 655s. And I have, I have some of those, some old ones in the garage because the fan, the heater fans are, prone to going out. I've got two of them out there. No. Uh, well, I've got good uh, the exhaust fans, the vent fans. They're good, and the heater fans were bad. And anyway, with this, uh, I liked, I don't have the cover. It's in the box. Okay. It has a, <clears throat> I liked, the, the, uh, this was a, that, that's all bent right there. It wasn't like that. That should probably. I bet you it got hot, but it should. I would think if it got hot, it was mounted like this. I would think this would go the other way, not up. Anyway, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take the motor out and see, because I was thinking about putting one of these fans in there. With that, with that section there, I could just. Uh, if I'm figure, I know I can figure out how to wire it now that I see it without damaging it. Well, I don't have a connector like that, but I don't know. I might have to buy something. Having something that small, that's really small to make, you know, to make a connection. But uh, whichever way it blows, I'm not sure which way it blows, but I would mount it, take this one out and put that one in its place and hook it up to right there somehow. These little, oh yeah, these little rubber deals, I think there's, those are, I think those are regular, yeah, the, <clears throat> those are regular, uh, yeah, those are regular, I'm sure that's part of how it, ma it stays still in the uh, server, but if I did use one of these, I think you could take those out, the, the rubber things that pop in and pop out, and uh, you could put a screw, normal fan screws in there. I don't know, some of, you know, fan, a lot of, well, regular old desktop fans, and, yep, have an arrow on them that show you which way the air goes. Oh, that kind of, that's kind of funny. Oh, is the arrow pointing to the connector and then another one pointing which way the air goes, I think. So, uh, <coughs> I don't know if that would show up in there. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna be able to see it on that camera. So anyway, you've, you've probably seen them. They're just kind of a part of the You've seen them on other fans probably, if, or server fans if you, you you work with servers. But anyway, yeah, that's a good size. Uh, it would work. And and I can see with, now since I can see enough of the wiring, I know, <clears throat> like if it's too, it's gonna, if you put, run 12 volts to it, uh, then it's probably gonna be run full blast. That's the thing, these are, you know, these are speed controlled, but it looks like since there's a 12, there's a yellow and a red, I'm figuring that it changes voltages, but it's still more to it than that. I, I'm, it's probably PWM controlled or something, other kind of thing that I don't know about. That's a popular thing with, con, you know, speed control fans is PWM control. But anyway, uh, I'm going to actually oh, take that fan out here in a little while. First, I want to figure out <clears throat> for sure. I don't want to just start trying to plug, you know, power into these. I have a, I call it my power supply amp. <clears throat> I got two power, computer power supplies uh, that I built years ago down, down under there. <clears throat> and it's got two car amplifiers in it. And that's how I, it's my amps for my sound system. And when I built it, I plan to also use it as a, you know, as a power supply for any projects I'm working on. But the problem is, or my, uh, I have a hard drive, hard drive adapter 
you know, you could plug in either IDE or SATA drives into it, uh, <coughs> and it turned, you know, to USB, you control, change it to USB, and you can plug it into any computer with USB. <coughs> but what happened was, is that the hard drives make horrible, you know, mind-numbing buzzing noises <laughs> through the amps, so I uh, couldn't use it that way. <coughs> but it's still like it. I can still pull out a plug and use it if I want. And I do if it's something that's not uh, noisy, you know, like that. But uh, anyway, I don't want to risk messing. The, I want to use. I want to plug them in like they're supposed to be plugged in and make sure they work properly before I start playing with them, if I do at all. Because I also have the vent two two vent fans in those Braun six fifty five. Uh, you know, bathroom ducts, and uh, their heater, their heater and vent fan combos, and uh, they, uh, but they're really loud. But yeah, I got to thinking, well, maybe I could put that that blade on it, you know, instead of the one that's on there, and maybe it wouldn't be loud. Uh, and with them, they're 110 volt. No big deal. That that setup I made, I can just wire it straight up to one of those. If I use one of these, then I'm going to have to waste a whole computer power supply to run this thing, and I really don't want to do that because uh, that's too many amps. I, I've got lots of uh, yeah, 2.45 amps. I got a lot of little bricks, you know, all different ones. And I do have a one or two for printers. I don't think they do that many amps. One's 2.45 and this one's 3.30. Uh, the big, usually the big, I might have a one and a half amp. And you, you don't want to do that. You don't want to, you, you don't, uh, I don't really like the idea of having a, a, a uh, wall wart plugged into my closet like that. Uh, because, you know, when they go out, they just, they're liable to burn themselves up or something, and I don't really want that in my closet to where I can't. Of course, where all the things around here are plugged in, I can't. S At least one good thing, I'd smell it. Well, I might not smell it if the fan's still running. Well, if the power goes out, the fan will quit running. But, <clears throat> yeah, the quickest way I'd find out if one of the wall works for all this le electronic stuff went out is if uh, <laughs> if it's... Uh, <clears throat> uh, if I smelled it because it's all out of sight. Let's see, I was fixing, yeah, let me go ahead and check my stream. Um, back on the desktop, and let you show it while I'm doing it so that it won't be just showing half of me sitting there. <clears throat> Let's see, history, see if I can get back there that way. Probably that one. I hope so. You know they've changed. They're changing in the process of changing the way you live stream works, and they keep. They won't let you go straight to this anymore. You have to click, jump through three or four hoops of links. To they're changing the process of changing the way you live right, stream works, and they the keep. They won't let you go straight to this anymore. Yep, sounds good. Okay, and this machine just can't handle that running all the time, so I just have to close it. Matter of fact, I'm used, I like to leave this open so I can watch my video, make sure my backup video is working, but I want to make sure nothing goes wrong here. Okay, so let me think. <clears throat> okay, I guess the best thing for me to do, to be for me to feel safe, uh, is uh, shut the server down, even though that's going to take a lot longer. I don't really want to do it that way, but it'll shut the server down and then take one out and put that in and put one of those in. And then I guess I could do them both. And if they both work, I'm everything's fine. Yeah, I, I was, you know, really when you want to test things, you want, you, you usually want to test, you know, one particular thing at a time. But I'm not trying to figure out if something, eh. Well, if one, one spins up and the other one don't, you'll know. You can see the, whether or not they're spinning. Yeah. Okay, I can put them both in there. That way I won't have to reboot it twice because it does take a good while. Take more time figuring out what to do than doing it, right? Okay, so... Um, uh, let's 
see. I'm going to go ahead and put camera four over that way because uh, it's, the, it's, the, it's the higher resolution. And uh, I think that's well, maybe a little higher. Yeah, the last time I did that, I noticed I really needed to really needed to be up about to the top. Almost, yeah, see, that's still not quite tall enough to keep from cutting my head off. It's just kind of the way the angles of everything is. It just moves too easy. Oh, there we go. I'm just blocking it. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to open the door. Yeah, and that that uh, floor that floor fan's old. I don't want to leave it in there for a long period of time because I've had to oil it and you know clean it once ever. Well, I got to where I don't use it much anymore. I used to have to clean it every year, you know, uh, oil it up and everything, or else it would wouldn't keep running. You can't really hardly see the lights, but that they're they're on. Well, there's really oh yeah, there's lights on the hard drive blinking, but you can't see them in the video. It don't look like anyway. Uh, okay, I'm on the camera. I'm on the wireless now. I got to get over here and switch. Actually, I don't need the keyboard. Switch on the. Uh, uh, I'll just leave it like that. I can. You can kind of see the monitor on camera too. Normally, that's what I'm doing it when I'm working on the server. There we go. Okay, so we'll shut it down. And uh, <clears throat> there we go. Oh, I forgot. When the server boots up and shuts down, it makes uh, really loud noise. When it boots up, it's real bad. Let's see. What is plugged into there? I think my, yeah, my battery for Cam 1 is my power supply for Cam 1. I mean, it has a battery, but I don't want to make it. It's going to, I guess I can unplug. I'm using a USB sound card, That's why it, and that's what that thing does. I guess I could unplug it for this part. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess I should... I don't know, that light's really not going to help. So yeah, I can unplug the USB sound card here. It does work, but it's not the greatest. It, it It's terrible. You know, if I, I'm used to have, turning, having my amps on all the time, all day, you know. Not all night, I turn off at night. And this is my 8 terabyte backup drive. I'm going to unplug it too. And now I've got to get... <clears throat> got to get... Uh, I don't actually have a good way to, unless I wanted to use this one, it'll go up in there. I don't really have a good way to, I can do that. Let's just put it over there and I'll, then I'll turn it on. I think I can do that okay, yeah. It's not, I think, well, it's going to be in the way too much right now, but I will do that. I might even do a split camera deal or something. But I've got my HDMI cable and my... Uh, I've got a couple of empty hangers here. I might be able to use them, one of them to hang stuff on. Let's see. <clears throat> I gotta be real careful because that's n there's no strain relief back there for that thing. I gotta get to get it out of the way. So that I can uh, get the lid open. Oh, my Ethernet cables are laying on the door, too. 
Hmm. This is going to be harder than I thought. I can pull it forward quite a bit, I think. Now, Ethernet cables are barely long enough to reach. They and my, the way I routed my HDMI cable. is making me pretty restricted on what I can do. I just now realized. I haven't touched them since I got them in there. Oh, okay, that, that was enough movement to where I can... I don't want to twist on that. I actually can spin this thing all the way around, but I don't want to. Don't want to do that with all these cables plugged in. Okay. Yeah, that 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 uh, HDMI cable is pretty stiff. Doesn't like going that way and I don't want to force it because there's no let's see do I have oh yeah I do have a twisty on it good kind of keeping it from getting broken you know from the connector getting broken okay now <clears throat> I'm not really gonna I can't get in here and put a camera in here too so but I did get it to where I can get the lid up Luckily, the lid easily comes off without having to raise it up real high. Well, let's see what we got here. Oh, there's not really any, there's pictures on, if you haven't ever seen one, it's pretty cool. It tells you how to do a lot of things right there under the lid. Um, <coughs> I it is dusty. I'm getting myself into dust. Okay, now I'll try to get you in on the what's going on here. Cause this will go up. You're gonna you gonna go in there and let me get in there too. I really can't see. I think I'm too close. So now I've got stuff I'm turning over. Uh, I've got a lot. Of, I took some of my stuff out of the closet. Well, some of it's out and needs to be put back in when I get done with this work. Some of it I did end up permanently taking out. Can't see the... I'll have to switch to it in order to... <clears throat> I think I have the scene with the... Two and four, yes. I just did that. I made that today. There you go. Now, but I haven't got the camera aimed good, so doesn't want to. The weight of my cable is causing me a little trouble there. There we go. It's pretty. It's not the absolute best setup here for the camera. There we go. Yeah, I think you can. Oh, yeah. I thought maybe there'd be enough light. Those phones actually do better in low light, I think, than that other one. Okay, so I do want my magnifying glass. I want to look before I leap. I need a drink. I wanted to 
The reason I left it running so I could kind of get the sound in the video, but I do have a noise gate and compressor on this lapel, so, you know, it, it's definitely toned down a whole lot. There we go. Yeah, you just squeeze them. This is a made in China, 3.30 amp. Okay, let's see where the connector is now. I think these are all going to match. 496. Oh, it says the same thing. HP part number and then replace with spare pen, so and so. 4631720-001. That's the HP part number. That's what I looked them up by. And I'm pretty well certain. I have checked them. Actually, one time when I, after, I bought it about a year ago, and I put, I put it under the bed. I messed with it some, and then I put it under the bed, and I have trouble with my health being up and down. And so I didn't get back to it until the last two or three months here. And... Um, it, yeah, you need to pay attention to where the co connector is to know where. I don't think you can see that, but you it probably won't let you put it in backwards. Let's see, which one do I want to put where? That's the Vietnam one. I think I'll put the, I don't know that it matters, but I'll put the China one. You could put the China one in that slot. One that's, it's just like the ones. So if I was going to use one, I'd probably use the one that's not a comp exact match. I was going to use one for all the numbers here. Four six three one seven two dash zero zero. Four six three one seven. Yeah. Okay. Four six three. Yeah, they're all the same number. So it's kind of odd that the that the ratings aren't exactly the same. There we go. That one dropped in all by itself just when it's on weight. It feels looser in the. Uh, Oh, they can all be picked up. Definitely not one to, to uh, put in your mobile in the back of your van and run around with. This one uh, is different. It's, uh, I didn't know, yeah. No, it's not. I was thought the top of all the rest of them. I, they're, they're, this one's got a wider rounded section. These are rounded for the clips but this one's got one where you can get your, you can really feel it. And I thought, oh, that's odd. Okay, so, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put the uh, lid on it with these in there. I'm just gonna turn it on and see, uh, see how it all does. And uh, let me check, make sure everything looks okay, that I have sound and everything, okay. So, uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna turn it on. See if they get super loud or do anything odd. They're turning. All of them are turning. And it's not ramping up or anything. It's like nothing was changed. So that's good. I'll wait a little bit and see. It will probably warm up a little bit around the processors with the lid off because the fans aren't going you know all the way through and i've been thinking ever since i bought my video card it's right there if you can see my hand or not it's behind straight in that direction uh <clears throat> anyway um it has two fans on it and i kind of wonder 
if they could uh, restrict, actually fight the front fans, you know, and I wondered if I should really take them off and let these fans do the cooling for it. But first I just wanted to get, uh, first I just wanted to get everything with the ventilation system finished before I started dealing with that. I'm thinking about doing that. And it's the first time I've opened it since I put it in there. It's easier than I thought it was gonna be. <clears throat> Switch back to my S58 until I get ready to shut that down because the longer I'm on this wireless mic, the more behind it gets. It gets way behind the video. Okay, yeah, I, I couldn't really tell how good my, my picture close-up was, but that's okay. Uh, it's not getting loud so I think that's oh I wanted to make sure that it's a, now I got to get over on the the other machine and make sure it's at a good point to shut it down I'm going to shut it down I'm going to be so hard to shut it down in the middle of the boot <coughs> oh I unplugged the, the uh, sound card so it won't make that big boot oh okay it just now got to boot Fedora. Well, I'll go ahead and let it do it, and I'll shut it down with the software. I could, you could, you know, you should probably should be fine to shut it, hard shut it down from there. It always is with a desktop or a laptop, but it doesn't take long to boot Fedora, so. No point in doing anything out of the ordinary for no reason. Okay, cool. They both work, and they sound great. <clears throat> and, uh... <clears throat> Reasons for complications. Any room for complications right now? Uh, yeah, uh, two dollars and fifty cents. Oh, okay. I have to log in first. I don't. It doesn't go straight to the the Plymouth uh, login screen. It goes to uh, goes to a command line, and you've got a. All you got to do is type your username, your password, and. Uh, uh, And uh, type, and then after it gets logged, you get logged in. Type start x, s t a t x, and it'll uh, it'll open. It'll start up. Uh, make, I got Make Desktop on there. At first, I was really like, oh man, I want that working. If I have to reinstall, but now it really is not a big deal. Get you know d doing that keeps other people from knowing how to get in there. Of course, I always have a password on my machines anyway, so. But I don't worry about it. It's just family here, you know. But uh, once it's up and going, then I just, you know, I don't have, I can't stand when they log out and make you log back in and all that crap. That's me insane. So I don't do that. But uh, the only thing I'd worry about is if somebody, actually, in the, well, in the command line, if they're not logged in, they can't work, break anything. I'd be more worried about somebody accidentally breaking something. But pretty hard to break uh, Fedora anyway, or to bang. It's not like Windows where the, you get two or three keys at once, you might break the operating system, you know. I mean, you can do it, but uh, if you do mess up the, the file system or something, then it usually fix itself on the next boot. You don't have to manually do it like in Windows. So it's booted back up. It looks like it's finished booting. Go look at it one more time. <clears throat> And I run, I've been running it, I think it's probably the second week I've been running it every day uh, as my main computer, but I shut it down at night. And my plan is, if, if it's not going to be too loud and if I can keep it cool enough, 
Uh, that's why I put it in the closet to, you know, the sound. There we go. <clears throat> now I've got to go back and switch my, back onto my wireless so that you'll hear me again when I go over there. <clears throat> Same scene. Same scene. Okay. <clears throat> of course, I cough as soon as I get back on the wireless. I can't move my head away from it. It's clipped to my shirt. <clears throat> they, they are clipped to my shirt. I have a little dual wireless set up. <clears throat> Worked pretty good. I wasn't looking for that. I was just looking for not dual wireless, dual lapel. Um, I make this regular lapel mic that's, you know, that has a TRS connector that you can plug it into your phone. I make it wireless by sending the Wi-Fi audio over Wi-Fi to uh, to the computer. <clears throat> Need my little my little light. Not much of a light, but it's just enough. I thought it was still spinning. Okay. It didn't bearings didn't heat up or anything odd like that, so good deal. So yeah, I would say that that company's probably all right. I mean, I don't know anything else about it other than this purchase, but. But uh, I found it, I think I found it on Google, just searching for the, what I've discovered, I discovered when I first got the server that HP, they got a lot of good documentation. It's kind of hard to find sometimes for this old server because they've taken down some of the pages, but they're, they, I thought they'd completely taken them down, but they didn't, they just archived them, they're in a different location. So, like I downloaded PDF manuals and the links in them don't always, sometimes they work, but most of the time they really don't. Uh, but if you go on the site and do a search for what you're looking for, I ended up, find, I ended up finding most of what I needed, you know, and I mean, for like the links that were on the, uh, in the manuals. The manuals has all the information, the HP, the, you know, the PDF eight manuals, but, uh, uh, but the, I found a, a complete list of all available parts uh, you know replacement parts for the this thing and that's how I got the exact part number started searching that because you kind of have the right one for the right you know it's got to be an HP deal like these only fit HP DL 380 G6 and G7 machines they don't fit previous and they don't fit later uh, at least not officially now and not and with a server I you know they're more prone to do that so I wouldn't if, if, you know, well, I've learned, I always, I always refer to Morton of my Playhouse channel. He's he's the guy I've watched and learned pretty much everything I know about servers and how I decided I'd be able to handle. You know, I had learned enough to get one of my own. I've been wanting one, but that and well, I found his channel when I first found his channel and found out that he did those kind of videos. Uh, first video of his I saw, he was re trying to repair a. Uh, one of those uh, electric scooters that they used to call hoverboards, you know, fake ho hoverboards. And uh, <clears throat> then I saw that, I said, well, he's pretty good. Let's see what else he does, you know. And I said, that's mostly all he does with server videos. He's a server admin guy, an IT guy. And uh, I've been watching him for three, at least three years now. And uh, he likes IBMs, but he does have a G6, an HP DL380 G6. But then he has a big old storage HP storage for, he's got like 72 hard drives or something in it that he worked really hard on trying to get it to work right he had a lot of trouble with hard drives not wanting to be recognized and stuff but he does do it this is all in his home he does that at work but he doesn't at home he plays with stuff because he likes it you know and he has a room a server room set up and uh, <clears throat> anyway he uh, f the first server videos I watched of his was putting video cards in servers and it turns out these HPs are actually made ready to to support video cards so that's why I went ahead and was well, the cheapest cheapest powerful s server that I found and they were already were set up for supporting video cards and the IBMs were a lot harder to get them to work in them some of them it works some of them it doesn't and uh, <clears throat> and they're cost more so that's why I got this they have a reputation for the hard drives failing but 
so I, I set this up in a, well, I set, it's got eight drives. I set six of them up in a RAID 5, and uh, I left two. Well, I, I went ahead and set them up in a RAID 0 separately by themselves, so that'd kind of be flexible as to what I might do. What I might do is put my, I have a 5 terabyte and an 8 terabyte Seagate backup drive that I think they're SATA drives. I think they're the same size. These are the smaller drives, like laptop size. And uh, <coughs> I, uh, I may go ahead and take those two out and put them in there. But the thing is, not both. I may have to buy another new drive, like and, and match them in size or something. But uh, but they're both have a lot of data on them. They're 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 mirrors. Uh, uh, the five terabyte was the first one, and the eight terabyte I got later, a couple of years later. So it's a mirror of the f five terabyte. Uh, so what I would do if I do anything, I'll put that five terabyte in there first. Uh, well, one way or the other, I could do it the other way around if I don't wait till it's filled <coughs> completely. It's getting close. It's only got like one and a point four terabyte left on it, I think. <coughs> but uh, I. Uh, <coughs> I haven't ever shuck, shucked him from the case <laughs> yet. That's what he, he somebody, told, you know, I guess on his comments, told him it's called shucking. And he, he didn't know how to say it because he's, he's, I think he lives in Denmark or somewhere. And he speaks English really well. But, you know, he's not, he's not always up on all of our country sayings or, or big city sayings or whatever. Anyway, shucking corn, you know. You, if you, you know what shucking corn is, probably. Anyway, so somebody decided to call it chucking hard drives, chucking USB drives. And so he would say, I'm going to chuck, chuck them. He'd said, I don't know how you say it. He said, chuck them. So he just starts calling it chucking them. And chucking would be throwing them, right? <clears throat> so <laughs> I never did say nothing on there. I just talk about him behind his back on the video because he's never going to watch my video. <laughs> Somebody will tell him. Okay. Uh, anyway, he don't care. He thinks it's funny too, but he's really nice, nice fellow. Shares his knowledge with the whole world, and I appreciate it. So I, I'm always telling stories when I'm getting myself turned around. Okay, I want to kind of, since I haven't had it open in a while, I want to go ahead and kind of look it over. <clears throat> Yeah, I had to buy a cable uh, to handle, uh, to plug in that, uh, I might need that light again, to plug in that uh, um, we'll bring this on down and so that I can show the uh, back of it now. I'm a little too far over that way now. I'm going to kick this. Th I'm afraid I'll kick it. Let's go a little lower. I think it would look better if you weren't looking at the shelf up there. A little lower than that. I know it's going to be crooked, but it, this, uh, well, I can straighten it. Oh, that's. Sometimes, my, see, I'm using a one-inch paper clip. Sometimes it moves, and then the the clip that I'm clipping it onto is uh, is a, this is actually a light stand tripod. It's not really a. Uh, it's not really a uh, tripod, so it's not very easy to move. It's easy to get shaking, and once it starts shaking, it keeps on shaking and. I'm going to such pains because I want to show <clears throat> what I'm doing next. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Okay, so my uh, got my eight terabyte drive up here because I didn't. I set it on top of the server at first, and it was well. That was when I didn't have the fan, and it was getting so hot it was like he's going to fry an egg. I uh, had some other stuff I had been setting up there. Well, the old power supplies and well, there's a couple of cups that are sitting down there in the floor mess stain with stainless on the outside, the plastic inside stainless on the outside. They were actually not warm, just pretty much hot after sitting there for a few hours. But anyway, uh, this backup drive, I'm going to plug it into the back. I have 
and two USBs on the back. I think I can reach. I got it where I want it to keep it cool because it's vents are only in the front and underneath, so it doesn't matter that there's stuff beside it touching it. But I'm gonna have to feel for this. I don't. Oh yeah, I do remember where they are. They're behind, down below the power supply. What have I got here? Something plugged in there. Is that the USB? What USB do I have in there? Oh yeah, I got a, I bought a long USB cable, like 15 foot long to go over there to my KVM switch. So, I believe I just found it. I just don't understand what, oh, that's the USB cable. Okay. There it goes, right there. The handles for the, what's that? Power, okay. Now that's power. I pretty. I think I put strain relief on pretty much everything. Maybe not the power. I just stepped on the tripod, I think. Knocked the cup over for somehow. But, uh, power. Now where's that USB? I think I think it's yeah in the uh, Ethernet. I have two Ethernet cables in there. One for Ethernet, Internet, you know, network, and one for ILO. So I can. Oh, I was going to look at the, how warm it was. Oh well, that's all right. It was nice and cool. This is. I knew this was going to be tricky. At least with it pulled up like this, I can reach it. I just got to not go too far and have it tilt forward. Pull it a little more where I can reach it a little better. I thought I'd be able to feel my way through there pretty e a lot easier than, than it's being. I can find the cables, but I can't find where they're going, where they're plugging in. I did, I did a minute ago, I thought, okay, that's one of them. I think, no, they're not over each other. They're beside each other. That's right. What's that one? Power again, because I'm not down there. They're underneath the power supplies, so it's a little... That's Ethernet. That's power. Yeah, I think they could be pulled out messing around there, those power ones. And I don't want to keep pushing around on the, the way I have that. I, don't know, I guess that's the best way. But the way I have that uh, HDMI, <clears throat> that's the one I'm worried about, breaking it off in the video card. Breaking the video card connector would be a bad day. Oh, just as far as I can reach. I'll try coming this way just a little bit more. Okay. Is that it? That feels more like an ethernet. Or it's just a vent. Where are you? With them all tied to stuff, which is, you know, need the strain relief. But with them all tied to stuff. It's getting, turning out really hard to trace them. I feel like I thought I could do pretty easily. There, okay. I just didn't know where it was. Okay, there's where it's tied. I've been putting this off because I knew it would be hard. <laughs> There's one. Maybe that spot that I felt really was a USB. It just felt like it was too big. To be a USB. You know what? Maybe they really are on top of each other after all. Where'd you go? Uh, it's, I've got tables tied 
really close to each other or to yeah to each other there it goes I can tell by the uh, the adapter cable is a very new slick kind of sticky sticks to your fingers cable clear USB USB cable has clear and you can see the insula uh, the uh, shielding the foil shielding through the clear yeah Yeah, there's some Ethernets. Uh, I don't remember exactly where they are. There's three more Ethernets. And th that's why I keep thinking I've got found. Boy, this is way harder to find than I thought it would be. Spend an hour doing this. Maybe it's actually... Maybe I chose the one... Oh, I think I found it. I think I chose the inboard or the one close... If they're on the left side, if you're looking at the front of it, and I think I must have chose the uh, right one. And so, yeah, that feels like a USB. Now I have to figure out its orientation. Lost my spot now. All this. Well, spinning it around, yeah, there we go. Now I'll probably want to unplug it. But the thing was, I couldn't plug anything else. I have four. That's all it has. I got it. Just kind of making sure it's not. Oh, I was making a little blue light come on somehow. Yeah, there's a little. Well, there's lights for some stuff. Might have came on because I plugged something new into it. There's that little blue light that comes on to tell you, uh, you know, what's the light comes on in the front to tell you what's connected in the back. It lights up. Uh, I think you can do it from either end. I can't remember now, but anyway, I did get it. I'm trying to make sure everything else is still good. Or I could quit. I tried to be careful not to yank on anything, but you never know what you might have done. I have more than once knocked out a Ethernet cable trying to feel for stuff on those desktop machines. I didn't want to pull them out. Uh, And you accidentally hit the clip, and it just jumps out of there like you like you did it on purpose. Okay, I know that the uh, ILO. Well, I just found the open place for the heat. I uh, left uh, left one of the covers out to let the heat out for the, from this video card, and they're sharp without you know the hole is without the cover on it like the slot cover I don't really know what to call it bet Morton knows and probably knows it right in English and I keep on to say Dutch now probably I don't know I always forget the exact you know the name of this country but it's right over there close to Sweden and I remember he it's really close over in there. Uh, it's not like Texas, you know. I mean, it's well down to the coast is like 700 to 50, 800 miles. I'm in North Texas. It's about 250, 300 miles to the Red River to Oklahoma, you know. And I don't know. It's it's far to New Mexico. It's far to Louisiana. It's far from here to pretty much anywhere. I mean, you could live right in the middle of Texas and be even further. <clears throat> but Texas really is bigger than most states. Uh, almost the only other states is, uh, Alaska is a little bit bigger than Texas. <clears throat> but three quarters of it's frozen all the time. And uh, 
And there's lots of countries that are not anywhere near as big as Texas. There's I've seen, man, some of these countries. Well, when I, when I drove up to Ohio one time, the states were like the size between the distance between Dallas and Fort Worth. <laughs> It was really weird because I'm born and raised here. It's what I'm used to, you know. Okay. I don't think I want that light. Yeah, I do want that light. Okay. So I'm going to put my lid back on there. Let's kind of look things over again. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I hit. There's there's buttons you hit to make the light come on. Uh In the front and I saw a blue light but now I'll have two I'll have two uh, that's probably good right there I'll have two USBs making sure those are down okay uh, in the front that I can use one of them is going to be occupied with the sound card all the time and the other one if I want to plug in anything else I can now because before I had the uh, eight terabyte in the one and the sound card in the other, and that was it on the front, you know. That light's gonna be door. Well, let's try and see. Okay. So yeah, if you want to have a server in your room, your bedroom, like like I'm doing. Uh, I would say that it's really, it's a, well, I would say don't vent it into the attic unless you have to. I didn't have no other choice. And you're not going to be able to do it without venting it. Uh, there we go. Because I did run it with the vent installed but no fan. And it was after, well, as soon as I started watching YouTube videos, that just works. Every, any machine watching video, YouTube. Uh, especially now the new version they came out with of their YouTube pages, you know. But uh, anyway, uh, you'll need a vent, and uh, that's a four inch. It's a dryer vent, the kind with the flappy door. And I mounted it upside down, and the fan that I bought would, couldn't open the door, so I had to screw it open, put a screw in to hold it open. And it couldn't even, know, I didn't show the louvers that came with that fan but it couldn't open them other either so I had it in there without any I wanted to have the doors to shut when it's off so that mosquitoes and bugs and critters won't come in you know but let me stop talking so I can, I'm gonna break something here okay because these cables yeah these cables need to come up over they're not long enough to go around the back of this And my towel is on there to keep. This is a file cabinet that I have. Uh, have it sitting on that I've had in here for years, probably 20 years. And uh, so it's plenty sturdy to hold it and everything. And it gets it, you know, that's a good height for me. I like that. Um, I gotta make sure I don't ram the uh, slide this off of one side or the other, and I don't want to ram the uh, that uh, HDMI cable into the wall. I can't reach the wall to feel for it. Oh, shit! I forgot one of the cables, the one I just plugged in. It was getting stretched. It's gotten itself under. <laughs> I knew it wasn't long enough. Good thing. Uh, good thing I gl hot glued that other end into the deal here. That would have yanked it straight out of there. That's what it would have done. Wouldn't have probably hurt it, but would have yanked it straight out of there. I was like, I don't think I'm to the wall yet. Why is it not wanting to move? And can't reach. I just I flat cannot reach to the back. You know. Well, that's as far as I can go, and safely with that cable anyway. Okay. Okay, everything's nice and loose. Yeah. I 
really would like to have. But I'm going to, when I stretched on that, it made me kind of, you know, normally what I would do is, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to pull it back this way far enough to get to where I can give it a feel. Make sure it feels okay. Yeah, that seems okay. Okay. This time I went that direction. Now I want to check this. I want to make sure I haven't. Yeah. I'm... Luckily, my. I usually I use twist ties. They they're more. They're you can kind of easier to adjust exactly how long. How how you want them, the length and the, where the tightness gets, then uh, you know zip ties. That and that's what I had handy at the time. <laughs> I've used them and just leave them for years, and they don't hurt. You know they work great. So uh, I've used them mostly uh, for cable strain relief. Uh, that's really what I use. Uh, now that I think about it, I really don't use zip ties here in my room. You know, in my, I have a computer rack over there. That's and that's where I really wanted to put the server originally, but I was, I, you know, after I worked on it and ran it enough, I realized that it's going to make, uh, <clears throat> especially once you start using it and make it work a little bit, it's going to make so much noise that, uh, you know, I, I would have to build a soundproof box. <laughs> And you know you can buy server boxes, but there's you know you're looking at 350 bucks bot you know 250 350 bottom line there. All my little cans of stuff fell over, but I'm not gonna I'm you know, better. Pick them up. Uh, my stuff is. That's not good. I don't know exactly where I had this HDMI cable, but my stuff is in kind of a mess right now because I can't figure out where I want to put stuff. Oh, the garage is full. I can't hardly put anything, and I don't want stuff out there that I don't want torn up, you know. Uh, what's that cable? This is not, oh, not pretty for one thing, but anyway, I just realized this cable can go beside that. I know what will happen. On one day I'll say, oh, I'm going to open that drawer, and I will not even realize that that cable's right in front of it. I'll give it a good yank and find out that that wasn't a good idea. There we go. Anyway, all this stuff is basically kind of homeless stuff. You can't see it, but it's just cut a couple of cups and WD-40 and stuff. Stuff that used to set on. Some of it used to set on top of this file cabinet. But anyway, that towel is there to protect me from scratching up my filing cabinet because I did a, a lot of hard work on that painting it black when I first got it. It was army green for got it for like fifteen bucks. Let's see if, yeah there it is. Uh there's the stuff I was fighting with. Okay. Uh let's go back over here. Yes, I'm doing a great video spinning that around and around. I don't remember. I'm just gonna leave it right there. I don't really remember what it was I might want to use it for next. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can turn it on and then go over there and switch to it. And I'll wait and turn on the. No wait. I'm gonna not plug in this sound card until because that I didn't want to turn my power off to my amps. I'll, I can just plug it in, you know, it's a USB. 
you see how everything looks. I could have left that camera over here so you can see close up of that. I couldn't really see all the warning lights, but I don't think there was any on. Everything was working fine. But I can see them now. So, uh, get my magnifying glass because I need to. Power supply green. Where's power supply two? It's not showing up. I think I got it knocked it loose. It's probably one of those cables that you can just, you know, they're they're redundant. You can just plug them in. Well, that's no good. I need a different cable if it's gonna be doing that. This it's fine on the power strip. Oh, I don't think it comes on unless it's being used. I still need to try and wiggle it and make sure that's not what it is. Let's see. Oh, I can see a bright green light back there. I, yeah, I don't think it comes, well, I don't think the light comes on unless it's in use. I remember, it seems like I remember that first time I, you know, checked the power supplies by these lights that I got, got uh, turned around about that. I can't reach it without pulling it out. I'm just so close, I only like about that much, my fingers were that much longer. What I'm going to do then is go ahead and get over here, get on the uh, machine. I'm going to shut the door to keep that the heat go out, out the roof, not. But yeah, when, when you got rent out the roof, then I've really been like when it was, it was raining for almost a whole week. The first week I put it in, and I could smell the musty attic, you know, and and my allergies. Well, it's kind of weird. Some days they're way worse, and sometimes they're better. <laughs> What was that beat for? Oh, that was saying it was boot night. <laughs> so, uh, I can use the ILO to make, to see if, if that power supply, I didn't think I had bad cables in it. And I know I didn't pull one out or anything. I did feel one, I felt like they, they were moving more back, right and left than I thought they did. It's not a problem as long as they don't lose connection. Some of these, some of them do, some of them don't. You know, I found one. Actually, I haven't changed it yet. Another computer over there in the rack. If it gets moved just a little bit, it'll lose connection. And the funny thing is, different machine. You know, one machine it'll it won't do that, and another one it will. So it's kind of tricky <coughs> finding them. <coughs> okay. Uh, let's go ahead. Yeah, that, but I've been um, with the, fan, you know, that fan that, that started rattling or just that old floor fan, that's enough to keep the heat out of here. It's already, it's got up to 78.3 with me having that door open and well, it may just be warming up anyway with, that was off not until just now, so. But it's 66 in town, it's probably, let's see what it is. I've got an indoor outdoor thermometer here in a minute, it'll tell me. All right, <clears throat> so I want to go to cam two. That's good enough for you to kind of see what's going on on the monitor. And uh, oh, let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> Switch to this mic. It really gets bad when you can see my mouth and and it's moving and you don't hear nothing. And then, <laughs> and then you know, if I point to something or show something, it's really bad. But uh, so we'll stay there. I'm gonna get on this server. And hope it, I'm gonna if if that other power supply is not connected right, you know, then I'll have to uh, pull that thing back out enough where I can reach it and wiggle on it. Uh, right now, oh, well, I could just put another. I should probably put another cable in there if it's gonna give trouble. Those were the two long. I think they're the two longest ones I've got. And I wanted. I didn't want one. 
I wanted them to be close to the same length and uh, long enough to reach from up there to down where my my power strip that it's exactly just it's plugged into another power strip it just gets inside the closet and uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> but that's you see you got to log in in the command line and then type start x and then it'll, it'll go to i only have mate on there now i'll probably put xfce for a backup desktop in case this one breaks and i need to fix it nothing worse than having something break and then try, having only the command line to fix it in for me because i i'm not good at typing accurately or type, i can't Anything longer than just a couple of commands, I get. I can't really get them in. <clears throat> so uh, I didn't have to log in, but necessarily to do. Well, with, no, the power wasn't off. Yeah, you can go in if you if you have it unplugged or turn you know unplugged, no power to it. Then ILO will shut down, and you've got to log in, boot it up. You don't. You can be in the command line, but you can boot it up before ILO to start up and then you can get it to it. I'm going to go to it with ILO, but I don't have a way to get to it from here yet. The, it, it, you can't use the new web browser. You've got to use an old one. And so I've got an XP virtual machine on my other. I haven't put it on here yet. i got it on my Lenovo, the one I'm streaming from. But I think everything's actually fine. I think, uh, yeah, there's my USB backup drive, so it's all good. Uh, so uh, I'll go ahead and open up file manager just to make sure everything's cool with that yep looks good see this is a mirror was a mirror of the five terabyte but now they've been separated for about a week and i've saved a few things on here and a few things on the other one so <clears throat> but it won't take too long to sync them back up again i'll plug them both into the server uh, at least for a while i'll probably leave them separated and and then as long as I'm well until I reformat this Lenovo i5 but right now I'm using it so anyway for now I'm leaving them separated and each machine can be backed up I don't have a backup setup on the server yet I don't have much on it you know I've done much anything oh I switched but I ended up back on the server my KVM switch is by, down behind the monitor and I use a pencil to reach the button now <coughs> there we go okay so I'm gonna go to the desktop and <coughs> I'm gonna open up uh, virtual box and use that win XP virtual machine <coughs> where am I I'm on, yeah I'm on the desktop I remember just make sure okay yeah we're on the desktop Everything looks like it's working. I think I will check my stream since I haven't done it once I get this starting to boot up here. Well, actually, that works the machine really hard, so maybe I will not do that right now. <coughs> but, yeah, it wouldn't hurt my feelings any to use, unless it's loud. Uh, I'll use one of these fans in that little... I did, I'll show it at later, uh, that little vent setup that I bought. Uh, it was $16 with $5 off. And so I thought, well, either it's going to be a bargain or it's not going to be worth it. <laughs> and as far as the fan itself, it's it wasn't worth it. And I can send it back. I can do that. I'm not going to mess it up. But see, the just to buy a, a, a louvered vent cover was 12 bucks, So I paid about 11 for that with the fan. So, And it's got a way to mount another fan in it. So it may be best to just keep it and use it. And and like I said, I, I have the option of maybe using one of these. Only that, well, yeah, I keep forgetting this is going to need, you know, high-powered DC. I don't want to do that unless first I'm going to try those 110-volt uh, fans because uh, uh, I think they're t probably too big if – I don't remember how big they are exactly. I have some videos I made on them, and I watched one of them the other day, and so I know what they look like and everything. But 
This is a four inch vent pipe, and that fan fits inside of there. But the motor, I'm, what I got, what hit me is I know that those blades on those things tend to be noisy. You know, I think that's one of the things that makes it noisy. And we'll have to wait for this to finish booting up before I can do anything with it. Your computer might be at risk. Best on reverse might be out. It keeps updating. It'll update. It'll just automatically update itself. Uh, this thing, a lot of people didn't know, this is WinXP Pro. I used to have it on a hardware machine when I, I bought it, you know, the, the, the uh, WinXP Pro installation CD and built a, built a computer, the first one I ever built back when XP came out. And uh, <coughs> let's see if we can get in Firefox. And uh, anyway, uh, I don't use it. You know, I don't. I don't. Well, I've got Fedora on that machine now. I don't really use it much because it's it's oh it's a Pentium four and it's uh, I've got like Fedora twenty one or two on it or something. I used to use it to edit videos some because uh, because I've never until now I've never had a machine I could edit, be rendering a video and be using it at the same time. I've always had to do it on another machine. Uh, uh, but it makes a lot of heat and it's kind of loud that opinion for you know the old 80 millimeter fans but uh it, it would do it just but you know it might take my my videos are never shorter than an hour so it would take all night you know and all next day to finish rendering a video but uh and that's why i got into live videos so i don't have to do that uh, i used to think i wanted to i used to think i wanted to edit videos for a living but Never got anybody to hire me to do that. I did get, well, I did sound for bands, and I got some, and I got a job at a TV, local TV station in Dallas, a little small Christian TV station. As a master master control operator, switching the program. So basically, I was doing live editing, is what I used to say. But um, and we didn't have any fancy switcher either. It was just a push button and tape machines and. Uh, they didn't even. They had an, an old, ancient Shure microphone mis mixer with the twist knobs for the audio, and it was so hard to, because they, you know, the commercial. Well, no, they weren't commercials. They were, you know, spots for the different ministries that they played between shows, and and pub public service announcements. We had to do those every so often. We we just they just let us pick whichever one we wanted to play. I'm still waiting for Firefox to open up, <clears throat> and uh, anyway. Uh, as the engineer, I got to know the engineer of the station. They had a dedicated engineer. Actually, he went to my church, and so uh, he was real nice. And uh, I think that's actually how I got hired. But anyway, uh, he, uh, I said that since I make some for bands, I knew about that, and uh, also had learned a little bit. Well, I sat there looking at it. There was a, uh, can't remember exactly what they call them, but anyway, it's automatic level control that uh, that th they had their own tower, and I was in the building uh, for the tra I was in the building with the transmitters, the, uh, and the tower was outside. And that's where they had the switching s set up. Let me go ahead and uh, yeah, that's where I want to go. So I'm going to just click the restore button. I don't know why it came up like that, but. Uh, that's where I want to go. <clears throat> and so, uh, uh, anyway, I said, well, you know, you can just get a, I, I said, e it'd be nice to have one of those like that TV station, uh, I mean, that radio station had there. And he goes, yeah, yeah. And I said, but I'm sure they're, I know they're expensive. And, he, and I said, but if we just had a mixer, a real mixer, like a little Behringer or something, or a little Mackie, I mean. And he got a little, I think he got a little 12 channel, no, 8 or 12 channel Mackie. And that made, and since I was used to using a mixer, that was great. So uh, we didn't, e you know, you didn't need to, I mean, you could, but we didn't need to EQ it or anything. Everything was really all the way they wanted it on the tapes. But they used uh, three-quarter tape, three-quarter inch analog tapes. And uh, as they actually shot there. They did a, li a live show that we would broadcast every evening, and they would tape it and play it back. And I worked at, on the weekends at night, like midnight to sun up, you know not to eight and uh, we'd play it on they just recorded on SVHS tape it actually it was good enough I mean you could kind of tell the difference you know it wasn't quite as sharp as a three-quarter inch but it wasn't a big difference 
and it was high in three they had professional three, uh, SVHS decks they didn't have like you know a VCR and the cameras were higher higher end you know SVHS cameras too a heck of a lot cheaper than trying to get uh, than a three quarter inch beta cam that's for sure well, well beta cam with three quarter inch deck and <laughs> don't that's what some one of those tech moments. I love. The, I like his videos. He said, "Don't get confused between uh, the old beta, you know, video recorders and beta cam. Beta cam was the high end. Uh, actually, actually owned. One. I got one in the late '90s. I bought it at an auction for 350 bucks, and it was new in '89, '91, somewhere in there. It was over. It was like twelve thousand dollars or what it cost. It was a Sony BVP3." <coughs> Boy, this is taking all day to that's why I don't like to do this unless I really need to I'm gonna click on that again no it's still working so now I made it gave it another command that's I usually if I'm gonna do this in a video I try to see how much resources are being used now and over over a gig of memory I gave it a gig of memory trying to get it to run better but it, it does make some difference I think I don't know if it really needs a gig I'm talking about the uh, XP virtual machine might be better off to uh, to give it like uh, on this machine here it's only it's got four gig of memory and it's a quad core uh, i5 processor uh, but see it's working pretty uh, pretty hard now 50% of all that's going to be of all CPUs all four cores being used right now 24 and 25 plus a little here a little there um, that's why I keep that open so I can sometimes I have to kill apps that are about to lock up the computer now yeah now we're getting uh, the wonderful Windows XP hourglass oh, it went away probably should have not clicked on that restore thing that's probably what's taken all day I want to hit reload, but it may just make it worse. Already hit that, then I hit this. I think I'm gonna try hitting reload because it's really seems like it's not doing anything. Uh, if if it just kind of hangs up, then I'll have to close it and open it back up again. Should have known better to do that. Usually, when you have some thing like that, and and you have a low resource not enough resources you know you don't want to do that that heck that happens on on this machine anyway with our regular Firefox but this is an older version uh, give it something else to do uh, I'm really bad about forgetting that see this is 52 which is not that old is it well what we're on 80 now so that's pretty old and it's 32 bit oh yeah that's 32 bit XP well that XP did, I think, yeah, it came out with a 64-bit, but that was way later before they, you know, closer to when they came out with Vista. But anyway, I, I was telling the story about XP. Uh, I, uh, when they started, you know, in into life for XP, and they're, going, you know, everybody's saying, oh, you can't use it anymore and everything. I learned something. I found it online, you know, some website somewhere. I found some instructions on how to uh, change, do some registry changes. Uh, actually, there's a little, yeah, I think there's a little application that would do it for you. But anyway, uh, that would set it up as an enterprise. The tell, registry would tell the Microsoft Update Center that this is an enterprise uh, s system, and that's really the only, I guess, difference as far as you know they're concerned. Uh, between XP Pro and XP Pro that came on, like I say, this is another Wi Fi. It had Windows 7 on it when I got it. Uh, and I ended up, I had it, I set it, I reformatted it because it was messed up. I think it had viruses on it or something, malware. But uh, I ended up reformatted and I had, I put the same Windows 7 license that it came with and then I put, you know, Fedora 23 or something on there. And then I got, I ran, kept running out of space and well, I, something happened. I don't never did figure out where it came from, but I had about three Windows Seven systems and one and a laptop with XP, and I got a somehow got a network virus that got got into all of them, and so I got so tired of messing with that. 
I cleaned some of them out and you never feel right about it after that. You always know there's, there, it could still be hiding somewhere. So I ended up reformatting them and I just don't only, this is the only Windows system I've got on there right here. <clears throat> Uh, I will probably set up Windows 7 virtual machine on that server, and uh, I plan on put, setting up a Fedora, Fedora web server on there for my website because it's running on that old laptop. Still, <coughs> and uh, laptops really aren't a good, good idea for servers. They, uh, you I already run the batteries in an, another one that was, it was in. This is a new, was a new battery, and I've been running it for months and months now. I don't know. I could have been running it for a year now. I'm afraid it'll ruin it. Anyway, the battery was, you know, say 75% okay, you know, of a, of new towards quarter quarter used up and on that. It was an Acer laptop. Had a broken screen, but it was fine for a server. And uh, uh, it, the battery just finally died, you know, after running it for a year or two. I don't even know how long I did it. I used to always use desktops, but all the desktops I ha have or had, uh, they're, they're great. Because you can set them, uh, set the BIOS where they'll come. If the power is lost, then when the power comes back, it'll boot right back up. Uh, laptops can't do that. That's one number one thing. And then the battery. That's the number two thing, I guess. The batteries is a big thing, and, and just they're just not. They overheat too easy. You know, they're just not really good for run. They're not st sturdy enough to run all the time like that. <coughs> uh, but um, uh, all the desktops were get. You know, they're all single cores getting older, and they get the fans kept. All of them had fan problems, getting getting old and wearing out and dying. I didn't want to spend money on fans for them. And, um, and then so now that I bought a server, I didn't. I don't want to run the server. I didn't want to run it. Well, I want. I wanted my server to be most number one to be a powerful desktop machine. Maybe. Uh, so I didn't want to. And I could have built. I can install Fedora server on it still right now if I wanted to. But I don't want my personal machine uh, exposed to the internet like that it, it, it's you know if they if they hack through my you know uh, hack through into it then they all my personal stuff is right there too <clears throat> so uh, so I think it'll be fine uh, to put it in a virtual machine uh, because it'll it'll be separated um, for the I won't yeah I'll, I'll have to make sure not share anything like like this virtual machine is, sh I share uh, my drives with it, you know, my uh, the Fedora system, but I won't do that. And uh, I'll, I'll probably do a little more, re you know, boning, boning, uh, research, boning up on my knowledge about how, how safe virtual machines are to put a server on inside of a regular machine, you know, hard machine running on hardware. Uh, this is getting ridiculous. I'm afraid that I'm, it's just locked. So I'm just going to close it. It'll probably say not responding, and then I'll say, okay, kill it. No, it didn't even ask. Yeah, it was locked up. Let's see. Can't remember the command. Not msconfig. I want to. Oh, yeah. No. I, yeah, I don't want the commands. I just wanted to hit. Is that going to work? Let's find out. See, control alt delete. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna work in this virtual machine. Well, it'll probably reboot. So, I was wanting to see the. Uh, I can't remember how to get in there and see the processes. There it is. No, Hibernate suspend cancel. That's all it was gonna do. It wasn't gonna give me the chance to get in there. Let's see. I was trying to see if I had a uh, one of those simple little apps that you could see the processes. Because if I try to open Firefox back up and it hasn't shut down all the way, let's look in there again. Maybe it was so small. Everything's so small in there. I can't see anything. I guess I'm. I need to uh, make the fonts bigger, but they kind of look big there. Like I probably can't go much bigger. That's one thing. Well, Linux is so easy to set up your fonts where you can read stuff. That says 
MS config, IAP config, CMD, system, CPL, regedit. That's where you can go to your registry. But I think I fa they, that somebody put out an app when I was talking about setting it up as an enterprise system as far as Windows update. Anyway, I got updates. I got security updates until 2019, about May or something like that. So I was also, you know, safe with XP until 2019. It takes me forever to finish telling the story, don't it? Well, I go 100 different ways all at once sometimes. Config, MS config. I'm going to go ahead and go to MS config. I can't remember what's in there. I don't think that that's going to take me to the what's running in the background there. I should. I guess I might as well have just. No, that's going to take all day to start up. It seems to be running slower than normal. It's usually not it's this bad. I think what happened is whatever the error was. Uh, whenever I shut down, I may have uh, shut down Firefox with that thing logged in or something, you know, or with it trying to go there, and I got tired of waiting. Anyway, with with the web browser, it's always, ever since I had this running on a hardware machine, that was always was a bad idea uh, to say, yes, go ahead and try to reload that. Just go ahead and open a new. Now, now uh, let me look at there. This is why I always I don't like to do this on this machine. I'll be able to do all these kind of things on the server. That thing is so fast. It doesn't even show any resource use. Even when it starts warming up and you hear the fans when you're on YouTube, you're still not using like a couple of. You'll see a couple of processors. It's 24 cores. It's two six-core processors, but with hyperthreading, it's 24 cores, and it just shows up in the. On the server, it shows up in the uh, system manager. But uh, I'm looking here to make sure nothing's gone out of going haywire. And uh, let me lock up my machine. There it is. Configuration. When I boot, I I can't even read any of those. So it's kind of start up. Okay, well, that wasn't what I wanted anyway. Uh, let, I, by now, surely Firefox is finished closing down. <clears throat> yeah. I wonder, let's see. I wonder if making it full screen would make it. Full screen, host F. Host is right, control. Virtual machine will be now switched to full screen. And if you want to go back, hit host F again. Note that the host key is currently defined as right control. Pay attention to those when you're in here or you'll get stuck in full screen and can't get out. Done out how many times? Because you don't remember how to get out. Main menu bar is hidden in full screen mode. You can access it by pressing host home. Oh, okay. Used to, if you just hovered up here, the, the little menu would come up, but it don't do that anymore. And I would like to have a screenshot of that. Oh, I know I've done it a hundred times, but let's see. Oh, look at the. Oh, it worked anyway. Oh, it followed me. Can't believe it. That doesn't usually happen with virtual switch uh oh there we go thought something went wrong for a minute there firefox hasn't come up yet well that looks that's not really any better looks like there's a menu at the bottom there's a menu see and that's another thing uh usually it was always at the top but this one's at the bottom well that's doing what it should do though it's coming up good i probably didn't even realize i could do that but why did it go black and I'm going to hit control F and get back because that's not really helping. I think it was making the machine work way too much harder to try to do full screen. Uh, that's what I think. Let's go over and see. Everything still looks just the same. As long as that doesn't climb or anything. What will happen sometimes if an application starts 
getting uh, unruly, I'll say. Uh, it'll just start eating up all the memory. And I've got four gig. So, and see, uh, OBS is using quite a bit of CPU, but it's not using much memory. 66 megabytes. That's shared memory. And then uh, 700, okay, 774 megabytes. But see, now this is the offset. It's using. The shared memory is 1.1 gigabytes, and then what is memory usage? 801.9 megabytes. I don't know. Now that right there, the shared memory may not. It may only be used for short periods of time when needed. That's how much it could use. I'm not exactly sure how it. There it goes. It's back to normal, but we still don't have Firefox, and none of the stuff on the bottom right. Going full screen was a dumb idea. Why did I think I should do that? I can't believe this is not working. Why am I in here? I wanted to just check to make sure that power supply was was present. And you can see that in ILO. And this is the only way I got to get into ILO. Because uh, I haven't set up any software other than what I installed when I was you know, installed it. I used the, web, the net install, Fedora 32. Uh, well, it's called server net install, but you can install. You, you can there's several different server versions you can install, and you can just install. What I did was just make Fedora 32 make desktop, added the apps and group install app. You know, there's group installs you can add. You just click a box, added the ones I wanted uh, that were in there, <coughs> and. Uh, <coughs> install it that way but that's also how come I it, the fly mouth boot screen didn't I didn't re, I knew it didn't work when I did that before when I set up a server and tried to put my desktop on the server but I didn't install any server this time and it still did the same thing it was for door 29 when I did that and uh, I was just a server so I didn't care if I had to type start X to get in there uh, I really didn't, don't like that, um, but uh, one thing I don't like about it, like on the HP server, the text is, is so small I can barely read it, just like in this XP virtual machine. I just saw the hourglass come up, and uh, <coughs> uh, So it's it's hard uh, to see if I'm typing right, uh, if I'm making any mistakes when I'm trying to log in. I'm just so used to in Fedora, you don't even have to type your username. All you have to do is just type your password. It, it when it's booted up, the the cursor is in the password spot. You type your password, hit enter, and you're on. I do like that. So I'm gonna see. If I'm really hope I'll be able to find a way to make that work. Uh, the last time I looked and looked and Tried to tried a couple of different things and it still didn't work, so I just quit trying because it was a server and I didn't need to get in the desk, you know, the mate that much anyway, mate desktop. I don't know what's going on with this. I don't see anything completely out of the ordinary that would make it uh, do this, you know, just like it's it's just like the machine's barely running. Um, now OBS is a little well, it went back to. But everything looks like it normally does, and I do. I, I usually can, you know, run the virtu uh, XP virtual machine in. There it goes, finally, uh, back to where we started. So wait until it looks like it's going to go to Google this time. So I'll wait till Google comes in. Don't, don't try to give it another command, another thing to do before it's done what it's trying to do. But. Uh, <clears throat> My brain went blank again. Uh oh. It's four sixteen. My my stream has been down for how long? Sixteen minutes. I bet. But I am still recording a backup video. So I guess I'm going to end up having to, I kept, I told myself, I knew I was starting at like 1.30 in the morning. I said, watch for that 
four o'clock. I thought, oh, I'm not going to probably even go that long. But I need an alarm at like 10 to 4. I have my boot router reboot automatically at 4 in the morning. Normally, uh, it doesn't bother me or anybody else, you know, because everybody's asleep. But it seems like every other time I do a video, I end up staying up all night. And the router reboots, I lose Of course, this is I don't even think it's going to be near this. Probably, I. I, I This is why I bought that server and why I want to quit having to use this machine. Well, it's kind of gotten, it was just enough to mess it up. Once the Thunder Firefox gets opened up, it'll probably do it. And it's still not moving where we are. Better not. It looks my stream is down. I'm not going to be able to. I'm going to go ahead and try to kill Firefox on my main machine here. I clicked on that, but it jumped to this other deal, so now I don't know. I was trying to reconnect. It did reconnect. Why did it take that long? So, what it does, it, it usually, whenever it does lose connection, if, if, if it's not too awful long, I don't know how long it, I thought it was like a minute at the most, but a couple times in the last, year, this year, I've been down for, I knew I was down for like three minutes. YouTube did. And so, and I didn't, well, it was, I, was doing it when I was having I was getting all mixed up and messing up the beginning of my video and so I did it on purpose and I had two false starts and then the, the good one <laughs> and so I thought, well, I'm not going back and editing that you know I, well I could I don't have to edit it but I could upload the backup video and, and what I usually do is I don't delete the video I just make it private and when I do upload the backup video but I tried to kill Firefox because I saw that it just can't really handle. And I guess it switched on me right when I tried to kill it. So I tried again. I mean, it's getting so bad. The machine's getting so behind that I can't uh, can't navigate. You know, I can't do much of anything. There we go. I got rid of Firefox. Should have known better to even try that. All right. <clears throat> so I killed Firefox on my host machine on the Lenovo. So I got a green stream. I can't. Well, it, th that means it's good. So I won't try to open up Firefox again. And I'm and through all this time, I will be having unless something went wrong with it, but it probably didn't. My backup video. So uh, if I don't like the way that all turned out, it may be good to cut out a bunch of that waiting uh, time. So now we've got Firefox up. Uh, in Windows XP virtual machine, well, let's try going to my ILO. <clears throat> yeah, it may actually turn out to be a not good thing for this because I was just, you know, having a mess there. Firefox not responding and not happening, nothing happening. But yeah, I should be able to do all the kind of things I'll, I'm trying to do, I would like to do without with that I mean the difference between a quad core and four gig of RAM and two six cores and 64 gig of RAM processor speed is this is a 2.5 gigahertz and those are 2.53 so they're basically the same but there's two of those and they uh, <coughs> they uh, like this one it's a quad core that's all you'll see in the system 
Okay, this is the security warning that you have to say yes. Go ahead. Now, see if you you, you can do, click, you'll get something like that, and you click OK, go ahead, but it won't let you on the newer versions of Firefox or Chrome. Uh, and from what I've learned from Morton, you can't do it with any modern you know, modern newer browser. Has to be one from back when uh, this stuff was made. You know, when this server was this was built in 2010. Now this one's the same thing. So I've done. I've, I'm not going to read it. I've done it. 50, 10 times now, not 50, <clears throat> but it looks like it's working. But you got to do this two or three times before you'll begin, finally see the ILO page come up, and that reminds me. I don't remember the password. So I need to be ready for that. I'm really glad I tested those those fans. I was thinking, oh, that's going to take so long, but that was really very important. You just don't want to, you know, you can't trust new stuff, much less the used stuff. So, actually, it's kind of since I've been buying these used server servers and parts, uh, the ones that you know, I mean, I'm being careful about who I buy from. Of course, this on Amazon, you can kind, you can, you know, you can get skunked, but uh, if it's like. Uh, some of the stuff I bought is uh, Amazon renewed, you know, and so for one thing, if there is something wrong with it, the, you know, you shouldn't have too much trouble getting another one. But uh, you got a pretty good. You really kind of seems to be on the renewed quotes, renewed stuff. Uh, you got a better chance of getting a good one than you do with something brand new, because you know there's just no quality control with any companies anymore. They just make them and ship them, and then if they're if they're broke, oh, so sorry, we'll send you. At least they will send you another one. Most a good company will, or a half decent company. So I'm trying to find my password while I'm jabbering here. <coughs> okay, let's see. Doesn't put you in the. Okay, finally, I haven't been back in ILO in a while. I, I, I was whenever it was like before I put the fans in. I think I might have went in there that day that that I had that little real that regular vent fan installed. Checked. I can't get the text to get any bigger. It's already set on 300%. And it will not get any bigger. I need to make the like whole you know, XP system fonts bigger. Uh, might not be a problem for everybody, but that is a problem for me. Uh, let's see. It says power OK, so. We'll have to go into. I don't remember where to go to see the individual stuff. Oh, I think it's in here. Fans are all good. Ah, here we go. Oh, fan power supply redundancy redundant. So uh, it it that's I just just what I kind of thought. The green light only comes on when it's actually being used. Over there on the front of the server, <coughs> fans all okay. Speed 33 percent, 1329. See, it doesn't run them all at the same speed. In whatever area needs more fan, it uh, right now I can't hear it. That's the quietest I've heard it. I don't know why it got so much quiet. Well, I know why because it's 66, 67 here at my house, 66 up in four. I turned that on to see the outdoor temperature. And <clears throat> temperatures this is one thing that's really cool about this okay cpus are oh centigrade but you can change it to fahrenheit right there i wish you could make it default to fahrenheit we need fahrenheit in america why because america sorry america been saying 
It's not of America. It's America now. We used to say it that way just because the way we slur words in Texas, and now it's like the thing. <clears throat> All right. Um, ambient temperatures of the closet, 75 degrees. Yeah, that's nice and cool. CPUs are both 104. And see, the caution is 180, and the critical is 181. Caution in the ambient temperature is 106, critical is 113. So they can run in pretty high temperatures. Memory, 90, 100. Power supply, yeah, they're okay. Both of them show up. I wish that would highlight when I click on it, but and they get good and warm. 105, 106. That's probably the one I'm using, and then 102 is the backup power supply. I have it selected so that, and I don't know, probably a way you could tell when that's happening in the ILO, but I picked in the BIOS, I picked one that sounded like uh, if the number one power, uh, cooperative, you know, I don't remember the word, but uh, something like that. Number one power supply needs more help, then it'll help, but it's not just like this one's on or this one's on. It's cooperative setting I don't remember if that's the word they used or what what's this system 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 100 one of them says 108 there's so many sensors in this thing I didn't know they had that many sensors 102 108 93 it just says system and then IO those are not installed IO board okay okay 86 91 system 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 all okay 82 to 100 I.O. board. One, a couple of times I figured out which one I thought was the, the video card. Actually, it might be that one. That's 111. That would be the, that's the hottest one. So that's, Well, no, there's one that's 147. That might, that's probably the video card. Yeah, I would say so. But I really do wonder if the fans are actually, you know, in, on the video card are actually doing... Could be doing more harm than good uh, because of the way the server's set up. It's supposed to blow from the front to the back, and those things are either uh, they're either blowing out from the heat sinks or blowing down through the sink heat sinks. I don't remember. I think when I put it in, I fell to the air to see, but I think it blows through towards the heat sink. Uh, it might go the other way, but anyway, it's really going to stir up some turbulence back there, and. Uh, I have learned from watching Morton's videos how important that airflow is, and and you need to put the mufflers. <laughs> that's what he calls them, the mufflers. Put the buffers. Don't take the buffers out. Those plastic buffers uh, need to be in the right place. You know, it, you don't because if you ha leave one out, like say you don't have one of the, you've only got one CPU in there, and you, you don't have a buffer over there on the other side, then all the air is going to fly over there where there's not even a CPU. You know, it's going to go follow the path of least resistance just like water and electricity you know so uh, anyway looking good <clears throat> it's a cool lot cooler than it was without the vent without a fan up there and this one some of the air is going through the vent but a lot of it's just hitting the ceiling and circling around up there you can feel a little breeze and when it's cool outside you can feel a little breeze of cool air uh, when it's cool at night lately uh, I get a little chilly sometimes we still have the air conditioner on but this is the hottest room in the house because it's the furthest one away from the air conditioning. But I figured out something. So ever since I put that bin in there, my temperature in here has dropped almost two degrees all the time. Uh, that air conditioner is getting in here more because it's, I didn't realize it, but it's, uh, well, I just thought, well, it can't get, you know, the door's only got like a half inch or maybe three quarters space under it. And I actually have, uh, some weather stripping around the sides of the door because it was always rattling when the air conditioner would come on and off or if I had my window open and the wind breeze was blowing a little bit, driving nuts, it was rattling because it wasn't tight. So I put weather stripping on there to cut out the noise. Uh, so the air conditioning, the return air, you know, it comes out the vent, it, it needs to, and I was always uh, thinking of the return air, it needs to go back under the door, back to the, down the hall to the air conditioner return uh, air ducts uh, you know there's no return that's the only place in this this is when they built them back in these days they're some nowadays sometimes they'll or at least the last time i saw somebody getting a house built you know uh 
they weren't doing it. I used to be a cabinet maker in the set, late seventies and eight, and well, all the way up to about eighty five. I went back and forth between General Dynamics aircraft manufacturing plant and cabinet making because I'd get laid off from GD. I'd go back cabinet making, but uh, up to eighty five, eighty six, I was from seventy five, six, seven. From about seventy seven, seventy eight to eighty five, eighty six, I was a cabinet maker. Most of the time, I was a GD from '79 for three years, starting at '79. Then I got laid off, went back to cabinet making, went back to GD up until '92. Had 13 years total at GD, I think. Anyway, why am I talking about that? Who knows? Uh, anyway, I was just trying to say what what I had, and I and I did maintenance on buildings. I did that before when I, in 1975. I got a job when I was 18. Uh, Got married, got a job, uh, and they trained me how to do maintenance on buildings, gas stations, and working on little window units and stuff like that. And then uh, for a little while, I actually, few, just a few months, well, I always worked on everything. You know, I liked learning about stuff. And I, anyway, I learned enough about air conditioners to install them, fix a leak, you know, stuff like that, run duct. Uh, so, Return if if you have a room real far away from the return air vents, it's just not going to get good airflow. So, but you can run a return air duct, but they don't didn't ever do it back. This was built in 1962. They didn't do any. They didn't even try to be smart about it. They have one duct going into the hall, one return air going into the hall, one in the living room, and another one in this tiny little bedroom, the smallest bedroom of the house. So it's just like a wind tunnel in there. You freeze in the summer and burn up in the winter, you know, when the heaters on, for everybody else to be comfortable, you know. So, uh, I, I never, you know, I, it's just too hard to work to try to, I ran network cable, I, you know, network cable's an attic years ago and stuff like that, but, run, and it's expensive to run duck that far, so I never did try to run a duck in here, air, a return air duck. And you don't, you can't, you could just run it in the ceiling, but you're not, then you're just going to go out one and out the other. You're, but you need the return air to be down on the floor. And so if you're, our ducts are in the ceiling, not, they're not in the floor like a, you know, like a pier and beam house or a trailer. This is a concrete slab house. So, uh, so what you need to get a good airflow would be to put the return air duct down close to the floor. Well, that means coming down a wall somewhere, you know thought about well running duck in the closet or just using the wall i've seen that done before in two-story houses they just use that wall as a return air duct the wall cavity you know interior wall cavity didn't have insulation um so anyway another thing you can do that i had makes sense once i did it i put this this vent in the closet to get the heat out of the closet and i knew it was gonna because that door well that door won't even shut all the way without if you do should force it shut it the closet door it, it ain't gonna want to open you have a hard time because the way the house is shifted so got plenty of airflow all around the door and so it is able to pull, not only pull the heat out with the fan it pulls the heat out of the uh, closet and this room too without the fan it was kind of uh, for about a week there i was running it like that before i got got that fan uh it was, uh, you know, in the temperature of the day, our temperature's been going anywhere from 66 to 90, 90 you know, uh, the last couple of three weeks. So uh, at uh, some nights I'd end up being chilly because the cool air would be coming in because, you know, the cool air is naturally just going to, you know, hot air rises, cool air falls down. So cool if there's the cool the hot air would be rising out of the vent and at the same time it, I, the, I don't i can't i've seen <coughs> i've seen tests <coughs> like i used to watch <coughs> i like <coughs> aircraft and i watch <coughs> videos on wind tunnel tests and stuff like that so i don't know how much is happening at any one time but you're going to have air going both ways through that vent Cool air's coming in and the hot air's going out. But the fan, I, I, I think it, uh, you're going to have less of that happening, you know, more with the fan blowing it up and out than it, you're most of the time you're going to have now. But anyway, very unusual the last couple of weeks, two or three weeks, I've been waking up chilly most every night. And uh, it's because of that vent. 
And in the daytime, it's not, you know, 79, 80, 82, one degrees in here all the time like it was. Of course, it's also cooler now than it was a couple, three weeks ago. It was in the 100 degrees, you know, just three weeks ago. <clears throat> so anyway, 100 and above, you know. Um, so, uh, my, it's not only helping the, the vent, it's not only helping, get, it's actually working, getting the heat out of the closet. And the cl- and in the closet itself, I didn't know if that door would really block enough sound. But if you leave it open, you can really hear the, the server, and it gets too loud pretty quick, even if it's not ramping up. But if you shut the door, you'll hear it, and if it really starts working hard, it'll start bothering me. Uh, but uh, if the fans really start blowing. But uh, if you keep that temperature, um, you know, say if it's like this, this is perfect. But if you just keep it down to where you can't feel heat when you stick your hand in there, basically is what I've noticed, um, then uh, it won't make a lot of noise and it won't bother you. And, it's, and with that closet's pretty well, you know, like three-quarters of the way full of clothes, so the clothes... It's a real good thing to absorb sound. So, and the way my closet is, you might have noticed that she- the shelf doesn't just have to my shelf on the right and the left above the hanger the rods, but it has a full shelf. And I put that in there. I did it when I was a kid, and then when I came back here in about '96 or somewhere around in there, I grew up in this house. <coughs> uh, I uh, left in 1975 came back in about 96 um i put uh, another big three-quarter inch board it had like a half inch board in there and it was bowing <laughs> but so i've always always done that since i was a kid i have more space to put stuff up there you know I, when i first did it when i was a kid i remember crawling up there and using it for a ford but it sure did get hot in there quick so i didn't do it much all right power there we go present power reading 160 watts. Oh, wow. It's usually... Well, I remember when I very first started it up, on, sitting on the bench over here, the work bench, it would sit there at 150 watts just idling. And that's all it's doing right now is idling. So, but when you put it in the closet, it gets hot. It draws more wattage to run more fans, right? <laughs> so, but with the vent, it now it's, okay. it's good. It's pretty good. Uh, but it generally runs... 100 and uh, 200 to 250 watts when it's working. So that is you now. People always talk about how server you use way too much power. You can't use them at home. Well, if you've got any kind of desktop machine with a 450 watt or 650 watt, of, or even more uh, power supply, you know, high powered desktop machine like a six or eight core, uh, I think it's really going to use more than two. It, 200 or 250 watts. You know, they don't use all the wattage you have in the power supply, if you didn't already know that. It uses how much it needs uh, at any given time. Um, but this is, pl- I'm very pleasantly surprised at how much lower it's running. I got a total of 1,500 watts of power supplies, two 750 watts in that thing. And uh, the most I've seen it run was close to three, it might have been 300 or just close to 300 whenever it was really hot. No, no fan in there, and I was watching YouTube videos. So, I mean, if I was editing videos or something, that would be maybe harder work, probably harder work, if I was not, well, not the editing, but the rendering. Um, I got like 100 videos I need to, I've never been able to upload to YouTube because I recorded them in a format that I uh, thought they would accept and they didn't, and uh, I need to... Uh, Re, you know, re-encode them into like probably just do MP4 so that they'll work. But I uh, never have done it because I didn't have mach- cause I didn't have machine. I couldn't stand running one of those pentium pentiums two or three days uh, with the noise and the heat, and uh, I couldn't do it on my any of the machines I had. You know, they just couldn't handle doing that. I couldn't use them. You know. So okay, here we go. This is jabber jabber jabber. This is where I was, I just took one one tab at a time, but here's the tab that tells me. Power supply one, okay. Power supply two, okay. Uh, so there was nothing wrong. I was I started to pull it back out and wiggle that cable, and I was like, well, why do that if it's, 
I did wanted to do this anyway. This is part of my plan in this video was to go here. I just didn't know it was going to be so much of a pain to get it, get it working. Uh, high efficiency mode auto. That's what I've got it in. Uh, well, the high efficiency mode. Oh, this is for the power supply. It's redundant power supply mo uh, modes. High efficiency mode auto. That's what I've got it in. That's not exactly what it says in the wires, from what I remember. Uh, that's just one set. One, that's not the power setting. Uh, that's not the one. that. Uh, this is a separate thing. Uh, the high efficiency is, is even another. These are not high efficiency power supplies. The ones I had that came with it were, I believe, but these are the next step down. There's three steps of them. Basic, uh, pretty good, you know, good, better, and best, you know. It's like, let's see, it used to be before they got to where all they had was not even good. <laughs> uh, so we anyway, processor, 2,533 two two megahertz, six cores, 12 threads. That's processor one. And then same thing on processor two. It says proc, <laughs> I think. Memory... Okay, uh, yeah, they're all four gigabyte sticks, and I've got 64 gigabyte total. It doesn't show the total, and I believe there's two empty slots. Yeah, one, two, not installed, and I think <clears throat> that a lot of most of these servers that I've seen videos on, uh, you actually do, don't want to fill those other two slots. It will actually degrade your memory performance by a lot. Uh, I don't know if there's ever a time. I think maybe if you get up into the really big memory sticks, the biggest ones it could use. Don't know what the biggest ones it can use are. But I got. I, I don't see. You know, 64 gig. I'd really have to be doing being a power hungry application to ever need more than that. So don't anticipate really needing to up, upgrade that any. And the Nick network so uh, ILO that's the one I'm using right now and one two three four and then oh and then there's one two three four for iSCSI that's a network drive you can set up ISCSI, drive some of your your, part, your partitions or your uh, they call them groups I can't remember the word I call I just it's partitions but they uh, got other words for it in the server world <coughs> uh, I mean, well, I've got the five, six of the drives set up in a RAID 5, so, and then I've got two of them. I think they're each one set up on their own separate RAID 0 because I've anticipated taking them out and putting my uh, my Seagate backup drives in their place uh, maybe one, at different times, you know, because I can't uh, reformat both of them at the same time. I have to be able to, if I, I want to reformat the five terabyte because it's NTFS and I should have never left it that way. It's broken about four times and I had to fix it and it was scary. I thought, I'd, you know, I'd lost all my data. EXT, I'm, I went ahead and did the eight terabyte EXT4, the one of the, the Linux file system that uh, the, ma the main one used nowadays uh, and uh, some some people, some you can use BTRFS and stuff but it, anyway, it's kind of a, it kind of has its own software RAID uh, but if you, you know, I mean, using rates, I don't really need that. And and it doesn't have, uh, like, if you do need to work on it, there's all kinds of really good, uh, part, you know, file system editors, you know. Uh, I can't think of the name. I'm going blank on the names of them, but uh, I should know. I'll try to do that. Uh, part, no, part of them. The Steam's still running slow, isn't it? Uh, <clears throat> kind of forgot about that been going on and on talking and everything I try to go back to look at OBS and make sure I'm still recording and everything it doesn't go <clears throat> so I need to get out of this uh, virtual machine <clears throat> um, go back to the see if I can look at that yeah I went there everything's still like it was at least okay well, let's finish up in here and get out um I actually forgot. Oh, partition editors. Yeah, 
Deep hearted was the one I was trying to save. And then there's other ones. The genome it used to be called the genome partitioning tool or something. Now they call it something else. But uh, bl uh, Blivet, Blivet, G U I. Anyway, there's like, I've got like three or four of different G U I, you know, partition editing uh, tools on this machine. And uh, there, last time I looked, that's been, well, a year ago when I was looking, uh, longer than a year ago when I bought that Eric Terabyte drive, figuring out, I was thinking about going BTRFS so that it would have its own, you know, software rate and, <clears throat> and kind of be its own backup for itself to a certain extent. I mean, if a drive completely fails, you still lose it all, you know. Uh, so it's always better to have at least two dry, separate drives, you know. And it's the first time I've ever actually had that before, two, you know, actual mirrors of each other. I had like my other old desktop, I had like four or five hard drives in it, but each backup was just a single backup, and then another one had different data on it, you know. But uh, um, well, I'm going to blank here. I'm getting tired, aren't I? So I won't go into anything else. Uh, yeah, there's nothing else to go into anyway. Um, I think this time I will click on sign out because I think maybe that's what got hung up last time. Either that or I just click. I may have left. I may have left Firefox open and just shut down the, the machine because it wasn't responding or something. That's more like it probably what would happen. But uh, yeah, so we're good. Power supplies, power supplies are fine. The temperatures are really good. Of course, they should be at six. You know, it's only 66 degrees, but uh, I believe they'll do better uh, when I get whatever kind of actual vent fan I get in there, where the air is not just kind of aimed at the uh, vent and not swirling all around in the attic, but it's going out the vent. Uh, and hopefully uh, I'm going to at least uh, there's a, a flapper door up in the uh, Vent itself, like I said, it's a dryer vent. You may have seen those. Uh, let me close. Let's log out, like I said. Log out of ILO, close Firefox. There we go, that was quick. Close Firefox, and that seemed to work fine. <coughs> I'll go ahead and shut it down because it's really being worked hard <coughs> get out of. Uh, of uh, this virtual machine. That'll be, you know, half of the work this thing's doing is this. So get out of there. <clears throat> and um, I'll, I'll get that door out in a minute. And um, it has louvered doors that when the air, when the fan turns on, they open. But uh, it could only, well, it, when I was just holding the fan in my hand with it running, it could do it in any, you know, vertical or horizontal either way but after I so I thought it's going to be safe to install it uh, and then once I got it up there and I tested it uh, it couldn't open them well first I had the flapper door in the dryer vent and that and it couldn't couldn't open either one so I put a screw in the dryer vent door I had already put it, so I just put it back in there held it wide open and uh, it, it, it opened about half. Then it could open about half of the little louvers on its cover. And uh, that wasn't, you know, that wasn't going to be good. So, yeah, now, now uh, the machine is, yeah, coming back to life there. Good thing I was on the uh, SM58 when that <coughs> thing rebooted. Uh, I wouldn't have had any sound. Uh, in a minute, I'll look see if the rest of the cameras are even working <coughs> but uh, go ahead and actually check on my stream and listen to it I used to be able to use a little laptop the one that's my server for that but it can't handle it anymore with the latest update on uh, YouTube <coughs> so I actually just might have had something to do with Firefox's updates too, because I think it do, it does it starts ramping up the fan on it and overworking it the instant you open up Firefox. I think. 
But as soon as you hit anything, especially the admin pages on Firefox, you know, for to see your live stream and all that, it uh, it starts ramping, you know, running as hard as a fan can run, drives you crazy, and it gets hot, really hot. Let's see, I think maybe that will take me there. <coughs> um, and the crazy thing is, even if you reboot it, it'll still keep ramp, ramped up like that. You have to shut it down almost every time. You have to shut it down for a sec few seconds, you know, a minute or so. Start it back up, and then it'll quit running like crazy. <coughs> I heard a door open. I, thought I heard a door open. thought it was somebody coming in here. Oh, that's know which one that is that's not that's probably no that's where I'm at I think there live dashboard I don't know if that's what I'm doing right now or a previous one or something this is what I So, oh yeah, that's to, probably no. That's where I'm at. I think to listen on the uh, headset. I have to turn if I don't put it, it on the dashboard. There we go. I, I don't turn know it if up that's, all the way. And I notice when I use the headset <coughs> that it's like four-way echo every time. Never did that with the speakers. That's weird. Must just be something to do with the way uh, ALSA and Pulse Audio works. Um, I'm actually not, I, I, I have a patch bay, but I can't leave the Lenovo plugged into it along with the server or it makes a terrible buzz that I just can't, I can't live with. So, um, <clears throat> okay, that's good. Now I think I want to go right on to that. I want to show you what I've been talking about on that, so. Vent fan. I have thought about doing a, stopping this stream and doing another one, but as long as I've got my, even if only my 4K cam works, uh, and I can probably, just to get the mic stand out of the way, use the wireless, we'll see. Well, if it's working. So let's check and see. Well, let's check the wireless right now. Hello, check one, two. Nope, yeah, it's not working. You would hear an echo. That's what I was afraid of. So they all will have to be, I will have to be rebooted, or else I'll have to. You see, the the wire, the cam three with the audio on it. Anytime my router reboots, uh oh, what's going on there? It was like everything froze up for a minute. It's working, but not good. Uh, that one's fine. It came back. Those two, the last last time. Anyway, I don't remember before that, but the last time I. And now it's okay. They just do that on the Wi-Fi. It's really a pain. But the, my wireless mic is not going to work. Cam 4 will be working. I just have to aim it over here. Let me aim it over here now. <coughs> While I'm at it. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I think I'm not going to go messing around. I mean, I could reboot can. No, it'll never come back. I don't think it'll come back unless I uh, stop OBS and start it back up again. So since that's the only thing I work in, I'm just going to use the, this mic. It won't be the best picture, but I do can still, uh, I can do this. Yeah, that's... Pretty far away look at it though. So I'll just go to Cam 4 and do that. These, I was going to put back in their bags. I don't have to do that now. I'll set them over out of the way. Now let me get over here and get that fan. Just going to have to deal with the mic stand being in the middle of the shot. <coughs>
Okay, so the uh, this here is uh, supposed to be mounted like that. You know, the cables, the cords. One, this is switch to turn it on and off. And then this is a resettable fuse. It looks kind of like a light, but that's just a rubbery plastic, rubbery plasticky deal that you can push the buttons. You know, but it's to keep. Uh, like if you, you put it on an appliance or, or, or I, I don't know if it would handle being outside, but I mean, it'd be, it could be stand up to splashing water and stuff, but, uh, that's, I, I, um, I've actually bought, well, I wanted one for the microwave and I saw five of them for a good price about, you know, like half of that cost for one, same basic specs in it. These are 20 amp, <coughs> which is more than you need for this, but <coughs> What I really wanted was just in case the <coughs> motor was too short out directly. I didn't want it. <coughs> <coughs> I didn't want if a motor shorted out <coughs> to have it uh, in the closet and unseen like that, you know, doing that. So, um, so I put one of these in there because I had five of them. So anyway, plug box, plastic plug box, and I have some, you know, I have all kinds of stuff I've saved over the years. These are, well, they're both brand new. I don't remember when I, I'm pretty sure I brought these plug boxes, <clears throat> kind of mixed my old stuff with stuff that was in the garage, you know, already, and so I don't even know what was, what I bought and what mom bought or whatever, but uh, anything like this, I probably... Even if she paid for it, I went and got it, you know, because she wouldn't know she wouldn't know what to get, know what any of it is. <clears throat> but because uh, I did do a little bit of wiring, adding light. Well, I added light to the over the garage. One of those uh, lights that comes on and goes off automatically. Way back in the eighties. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, uh, I know she had an electrician do some wiring too, though. I think he ran the wire. Ah, uh, forget it. Okay, so anyway, I can t I can uh, since I can't reach the plug, you know, up in the ceiling without getting on something, and I, I could turn the fan on and off. I could put this down low, that much lower, to turn it on and off, where I could reach it good, <clears throat> and uh, so that's why I did that. And it just so happened, this is I think an old lamp cord that I had in my box of you know, spare parts. And it just so happened that it had somehow, on purpose or accident, I don't know, it had been cut. And then they, it was just twisted back together and had uh, electrical tape on it. And at first I had just pulled it off because there is a little, oh, it's in the box. There is a little, uh, <clears throat> it's actually easier to see in the picture than there, isn't it? There is a little... Um, short cord that came with it it didn't come with a plug or anything this is the cord that was on it uh, and I actually had this wired up to my box originally and then it wasn't quite long enough where I could really reach it good and I thought well I got this extra piece that I wasn't using and it's longer so that's what I need to be using so I uh, <clears throat> changed my setup and this is old real copper wire not aluminum or some other junk coated with you know a, a hundredth of a thousand like one thousand stick or less coating uh, of, of copper that's the way they do wiring now a lot of uh, the, it's really expensive to get real copper wiring now so you might think this is old and, and not very good and I used to think that until this was not a, considered a high quality cord uh, this is from 60s or 70s, but you, you just look how quick you know. You look how quick this new stuff breaks and wears out, and some of that stuff. You, uh, if you see a bargain on uh, wiring, you better watch out because from China or any of those other con countries like that, because it can actually be dangerous. Not just poor quality, but dangerous because. You know, back in the 70s, uh, 60s and 70s, there was a big thing everybody learned about. Uh, I had I bought a mobile home 
and lived in it for nine years. First thing I want to know is, is that wiring aluminum or copper? The wiring, <clears throat> uh, they were putting aluminum wiring, which is okay. It's good wiring. But when you, uh, when you connect aluminum wire to the metal connectors on a regular plug or a light switch, over the years, they 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 really really corrode really bad, and the so it doesn't conduct well, and so when when uh, the electricity is keeping on trying to go through there, it heats it up, and it heats it up high enough to start a fire inside your wall there, and so trailers were burning down and people were dying, and so they made a law that you know you can't do that anymore, <clears throat> so. Uh, but there was lots of trailers that had been made in the 60s and early, I think it's late 60s, early 70s, or mid 60s. But here's the louvered, um, so, and, and they're going back to doing stuff like that. They're pulling tricks like that again, knowing. I don't know if they actually knew. Uh, well, they may have, but I was too young, you know, to know. But this is pretty cool, uh, and that's the kind of louver I wanted. Uh, I knew they existed. I've seen them before, but uh, but th th when the fan comes on, it's supposed to open. And this one, if you turn it that way, one of them never shuts. So that's the way it goes, like that. And when the fan comes on, it will can it could when it was before I ran it for two and a half hours, it could open those easily, and it could even do it like that. Uh, well, it, it goes like that, uh, and then the, it would. The fan would be like this, so it's pulling. It's 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 pulling up to open them. But once I got it installed, it couldn't do it. And I guess that the dryer vent, you know, it's like a it makes a 90 degree turn. Maybe kind of slowed down the flow just enough where it couldn't do it. Uh, that's that's the only you know only thing I can figure about that. But um, I'm trying to figure out, I'm just trying to make sure. I was going to stick that in there, and then I saw that the instruction manual, well, there's nothing you can really read on it. It's not very good. It's really tiny, of course. But the little instruction manual, I was wondering where I was going to go, and you could see what I was doing. So I'm going to, I haven't done this yet. I'm taking this motor out. And, uh, yeah, and our wiring... Uh, and this house is only two wires, so when I redid this with this cord, I just I, and it didn't uh, wasn't anything on the website on Amazon's where I got it. it wasn't anything on the sale page, and wasn't anything in the little manual to tell you which one uh, which one's ground or anything. And they're not using. See, this is a yellow. Well, it's a yellow wire with a green stripe is what it is, and then there's a kind of a brownish and a dark blue. So, you know, the common colors here, which, you know, people always get all bent up, uh, bent out of shape on following color codes. Uh, I mean, trying to only use color codes to learn how to wire things up. You you should never do that. You need to learn what's ground, what uh, if, and sometimes you need to know what's common and what's what's hot, you know, what's, what's the AC, uh, NAC would be common. I mean, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Common would be ground. Common and ground would be common ground. That is, it, ground is actually a two words. Common ground, <clears throat> because all the grounds go to the all the ground wires are common. They all go to the same place to the ground. A real ground stake stuck in the ground. Now this house does not did not does not have that. It was wired with two wire. That's why they built them back then. And then the other one would be the neutral, and the other one would be the hot wire. The, the, but of course, AC is. It, it 60 cycles, every 60 cycles it reverses direction too. It's not like DC, it only goes one way and it's really hard to wrap your head around it. <clears throat> I can't explain all that. I just know how to use them and, and what you should, most of what, most of what, you, a lot, some of what you should and shouldn't do with AC or DC. Uh, like this, uh, this one, of course, didn't have a plug on it at all, but you know how some, they're called, po uh, Polarized, yeah. Uh, a lot of the modern ones will have one fat one and one regular size connector, you know, on the 110 volt plug, uh, the male plug there, and and 
the way the device is made, it needs to be, it's safer if it's, and probably a lot of it has to do with just keeping it from wearing out quickly <clears throat> if it's always plugged in that the way they intended it to be, you know. Uh, this doesn't matter. This old fan don't matter. Uh, if it did, they, if it did, they should have put, you know, put that in the instructions or, or, or put a plug on it, the right kind of plug. So anyway, at first I was like, how am I going to figure that out? Because I've been watching a lot of videos on electric motors, trying to learn about, you know, the AC. I always knew there were AC and DC motors, but there, there's one that I didn't really hear about until several years ago when I started watching videos about electric motors. There's the most common motor you'll see, like a washing machine motor and a lot of appliance motors or uh, universal, I call them universal motors. And it doesn't matter if you're in America or Europe. Uh, the ones in overseas will be run on 220, 240 volts. So here they're going to run 110, 115 volts. That's the range of voltage. But, uh, <clears throat> well, I mean, we have lots of 220 motors and things. We have people, I, I didn't realize this, but people over in Europe think that we only have 110 here. <clears throat> we have every house, almost every house built since, I don't know when, long before I was born, has 110 and 220, 240. Your dryer, your stove, your oven, it's all going to run on 210, 220. Your central air conditioning, which, you know, they didn't have back. Well, when this house was built, it had central air conditioning in 62. So they started that. Well, they started in the mid-50s, <clears throat> but came really more common. Uh, well, it was not real common. It was a luxury in the, in the 60s. When I was a kid, we had... We had uh, water coolers or swamp people like to call them swamp boxes uh, <coughs> evaporative coolers <coughs> no refrigeration <coughs> just water running through what looks like filters it was straw <coughs> and the air would be pulled through that with a big fan big uh, squirrel cage fan and, and they were great when the, when it wasn't too humid but uh, when it was humid they made you feel worse and uh, <clears throat> they really did make you want to, like I'm getting right now, got the window open and the vent going out the roof. <clears throat> so that outside air starting to get to me. <clears throat> Boys had trouble with that. So anyway, what I did, it's in my first video on this thing. Uh, I uh, finally hit me. Well, you know, most of the time a motor, the screws that mount the motor are going to be, uh, be connected to ground. Uh, and so whichever wire I did a continuity test and it rang on the yellow wire with the green stripe and <clears throat> no matter what combination <laughs> <coughs> I've got to get a cough drop and no matter what combination I did it would only ring <clears throat> from the yellow green wire to the <clears throat> Mounting screws, so I knew that was the ground, <clears throat> and that's the one I don't want at all because <clears throat> I don't have a place. I don't have ground in this house. Hang on. I <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, can't get this thing open. <clears throat> My nose is running now. <clears throat> I felt it coming on, but it just knocking me out all of a sudden. doesn't feel real bad because I've got fresh air coming in, but it's 80, 78.4, and that's where I start having trouble. <clears throat> got a terrible drainage and <clears throat> cho coughing and choking. <clears throat> okay, I just re keep rem forgetting. Let me go ahead and get on the desktop. <clears throat> Let me do this. <clears throat> 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 this 
this comes up ever so often, <clears throat> and I've researched it. And <clears throat> I don't think it's a. I just I don't do anything about it because <coughs> I don't want to allow it. But <clears throat> it's because of a. Uh, I tried to set up some application to automatically email me when something happened, but it didn't have the right privileges. Is what I'm pretty darn sure it is. And it tells you that this is SC Linux, Security Linux, and Fedora. Every Fedora, Fedora has this built-in security system. Anything it thinks it shouldn't do, it won't let it happen. And if, if you know you want it to happen, you can follow the run these commands and let it happen. But <clears throat> or in this case, I think it's just to help you figure it out. But I don't want it to turn it. Out. So, but anyway, once in a while, I, it doesn't happen every time I run the machine, but. Most of the time it does, and and it since I'm having a little trouble with it uh, being overworked, I thought well that doesn't need to be running in the background, <clears throat> so that's why I did that. And so <clears throat> so anyway, I figured out which one was ground, left it off for my two wire system in my house, and then doesn't matter which one is which, the on the in this particular case. <clears throat> now, I don't know if I'll be able to sh show this. Oh, yeah, I know how I can show this. Let me get my endoscope. I'm out. That's going to be too close. I can see that. <clears throat> I want to show, I guess I'll just go right to the endoscope. <clears throat> I know for darn sure that thing, you can't see it there. Let me see if I can. <clears throat> can you see how cupped it is? Sorry, can't even hardly do anything here because <clears throat> I'm a coffin. That is way like more than a quarter inch. <clears throat> yeah, you can kind of tell at that angle. There you go. That is uh, my legs on my tripod are getting in my way now. Yeah, you can see it there. <clears throat> it's kind of dark, but that was, you know, flat across there. <clears throat> so it was sitting like this running. So you would think it would not go down, you know, go, that, that came up, in other words. So, uh... <clears throat> Trying to see if I can get that in a place to where uh, I can work on it. There. Okay, I got 
hang on a second. <clears throat> Okay, well, I was hoping the well, cough rub does help quicker than anything, but <clears throat> this ain't going to quit. I'm going to grab my, my cold pill right now. <clears throat> Okay, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> maybe I can continue a little longer. So what I want to do, I got, I got a couple of tools over here in the, from the garage. Yeah, there's not. Now what I think I might do is that. Yeah, I think I'll do it that way. That way, if I'm <clears throat> not under the endoscope, you'll still see something. <clears throat> so shiny right there. I thought it was wet. I thought maybe there's a... But of course, there's no capacitors or anything that leak in this. But... <clears throat> I should be able to take... These, uh... <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse out and in that in the motor and blade should come out. Oh, the cover. Okay. Yeah. So that's motor is just a smaller version of the vent fan motors I have, but that thing is just. God, it had to have gotten really hot. <clears throat> I see. So the wires go through there. <clears throat> Seems like it's just jammed in there. <clears throat> see if there's any keepers or anything. I see. Uh, I see those slots. Slot. Where are you? <clears throat> to wait because it takes a while for it to, I'm going to I'm moving I, I, I don't see it and then I move again before it has time to <clears throat> show up on the preview I wonder if I can do it on this camera I'm going to just go to it and maybe we can yeah, you can see one of them for a second there there's slots <clears throat> all around it 
and I believe it's kind of a <coughs> plastic press, press fit. <coughs> <clears throat> well, before I uh, mess around with taking it out or anything, I'm going to plug it in <clears throat> and see if it's still rattling. I'm sure it's going to still rattle like it did. So we don't want it to be... <clears throat> I'll turn the light on on that endoscope a little bit. It takes so long for it to show up on the deal. I, said, mm, I can't really. It's hard to adjust. <clears throat> Find the right spot. <clears throat> I got it up all the way now. <clears throat> it, the endoscope gets really hard. It'll kind of burn you if you touch it. Like if you accidentally bump up to it. After it runs about f well five or ten minutes, but. <clears throat> It looked like it actually needed that much light anyway. So I'm getting, I had the cord all tied to itself. I don't like doing that, but it always makes them want to stay in a wad. But I didn't have a Quisty handy the last time I was messing with it. i got to reach over here and plug it in. But that server was so quiet, I thought, God, what if it sh shut it down, or did I shut it down? I stuck my hand in there, <clears throat> and I, I opened it, it's running, stuck my hand in there, <clears throat> it's just nothing. Nice you can throw the tiniest bit of warmth, but it's doing really good. <clears throat> so, The most. This is pretty stiff for such a small cable. It really can fight you. Of course, it's not very heavy, but <clears throat> okay. So, well, I guess I'll move it once I'm <clears throat> I want to be able. To, yeah, let's stick the cord into the fan. That's a good idea. Okay. <clears throat> Now, I really won't see anything moving back here. The blades are right there. <clears throat> so, now it's quiet again. <clears throat> right there, anyway. Now it's starting, starting to make a little noise. Maybe that the bushings or bearings have worn out that quick. I can kind of feel a little vibration, and I don't remember feeling that when it was before I ran it for two and a half hours. Still blowing about the same amount of air. It's supposed to be 33 CFM, 
It's not real powerful, but it was just enough to keep the thing cool. And then I was fixing to go to bed, and I thought, well, let's open up the door and look. And I was going to turn off the server, but I thought, well, let's check. You see how everything looks and sounds one more time. <clears throat> and that's when I realized it was rattling like crazy and that there was something really wrong. Now, this is how I had it mounted. <clears throat> I put these weather stripping on here. All the darn USB cameras frozen up. I've been... <clears throat> I was really only looking at the left side of the preview and I hadn't noticed it, so we'll just use this one. <clears throat> I'm going to get this one, other one out of the way. <clears throat> I think it's just that the machine has been run too long. Streaming. <clears throat> something sitting up there where next to where that goes and I knocked it over I don't even know what it was let me turn that light out that right might have been you know what since I had that light up all the way might have been dropping down the voltage and causing that because I have you know, that USB camera, that USB camera, and then the light on that one. It used to didn't do that, but, th I, you know, I was, this is still pretty new to me, this this camera here. <clears throat> I've had it for four to, four to, bought it, <clears throat> I don't know when I bought it, four months ago or something. <clears throat> yeah, see, now the endoscope's working. I think I, it would have worked if I just turned out the light, but I don't care now. <clears throat> this will be... This will have to work. I'll just, uh, yeah, I can feel it vibrating a lot, and I don't don't believe it vibrated really hardly, it, not noticeably. It's vibrating quite a bit. So yeah, this thing caving in like that. Uh, now I get it. It was getting so hot. And I would say, I mean, it's that it was getting hot. It was, it was running like this. That's what's weird about it. You know, when something gets hot, if it's, if it's like this in there, you would think it would droop, not suck up in there. And I checked the screws, and they were kind of loose, and I tightened them up, but I didn't tighten them up and bow it before I, you know, installed it. Was fly, I, I'm pretty well have a think I have, I'm pretty sure I have a good memory of it being f nice and flat and everything looking good before I installed it. <clears throat> but I was thinking that it might have shifted in here or something, and uh, when I saw that bent like that, and it was just uh, rattling because of that. Now it's not rattling like it did though, it's, uh, and but that I put that where we're stripping on there two two pieces you know to uh, try to stop cut down on vibration because that's mount there's two befores up there that I screwed it into and there's only two mounting screws that it and that's all I use that's all the way it was made. But when you get them too tight it bows. <laughs> I had to back them off. I was using my <clears throat> well I bought me a Dewalt quarter inch impact and I was using that <clears throat> I bought it back a couple of months ago and that's actually the first thing I've really really had a job for it you know was when I was doing this because I was I needed it to put those two befores in and everything <clears throat> it's running okay now but I darn sure don't want to put it back up in there and have it do that again and here's the thing uh, when I bought this thing, the pictures on the page <clears throat> showed it mounted the way I mounted it in a bathroom, you know. And then there was, and I looked all over that thing after I bought it. I, I'm pretty, I think I looked. I know I looked. I made it. I put it in a video after I got it. Uh, after it gave trouble, I made a video. 
uh, well, what, I made a video on it when I opened it up and everything first, but uh, this is the first video after it gave trouble. <clears throat> um, and I remember I kind of got sidetracked going too long, like I always do. And uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I noticed that on the paper that came with it, it says, don't mount it like this, only mount it like that. And I thought, it didn't say that when I bought it, you know. And I kept looking and looking and looking, pouring over the information. And finally, only thing I saw, I didn't see any mention of how to mount it or not to mount it on the well, Amazon page they had for it, uh, the seller had for it. But I saw a picture of it like that. And uh, <clears throat> that is, uh, turn it off now. <clears throat> I need it to be kind of right there, but the video needs it to be over there to, because of the mic stand being like the most prominent thing in there. <clears throat> it's one nice thing about putting this workbench over here where I can, I'm looking straight at my computer. I can see what the shot is. It makes it a lot easier. And it helps me, like with the endoscope, to see small things and stuff. Now it's actually, well, it seemed like it's vibrating a little less after it ran a while, but... I need to go ahead and unplug it. <clears throat> because I got that switch on, uh, that's only a single pole switch, Reg regular old toggle switch, and uh, <clears throat> happened to have it. It was a brand new one that. We bought at some point and never needed it. Didn't end up needing it. <clears throat> and so, you know, it's just been in my box of stuff. So, uh, and since I wanted to put that, that was, you know, good, perfect size to be able to fit in the box with the, uh, be able to fit in the box with the uh, breaker. But the breaker, it's, it's a 20 amp. It's too heavy of a breaker for uh, anything other than a direct short, I think, with this this motor, uh, this fan. But I figured that's better than uh, <clears throat> having to depend on, you know, it's sending a bad enough surge all the way back to the burger box to kick it off. And besides, it's probably going to kick at a lot less than 20 amps because this is Chinese stuff, you know. <laughs> I got I, I got a 20 amp because it was for the microwave and that's what I needed. But <clears throat> I haven't put one in the microwave yet. I have to take it apart, you know. <clears throat> the fuse blew, and I had a, I think I had, all I had was a 30 amp fuse, and it it was really too high, you know. But I got it going, and we've been using it, and it's fine. But uh, just they were just those regular glass fuses, the old timey car fuses, <clears throat> but. Uh, Here's what I'm thinking. I want to get this fan out of here. Where's my... I need to get one of my new fans. I didn't have my magnifying glass, so I wanted to, if I was really going to use one of these, I think I would use the one that's a little less watts. This one here, made in Vietnam, 2.46. That's quite a bit different between 2.46 and 3.3, and the 3.3s is what's in there. So I mean that that's anywhere accurate. I'm going to put, I started it a while ago, but I thought, well, that's going to be a, Waste of time in my video doing that. What's this one? I think they have the same stickers on them because, you know, they're used and they just, they're making their own stickers and putting them in there. That's already messed up. Hmm, I wonder how it got messed up. I don't remember doing anything to it. Get this one here. Put it in the one with the sticker that's better. I don't know if that, why that matters, but I guess I'll put it right there. I have a camera for now. 
Now, <clears throat> just wanted to kind of get an idea. It doesn't matter which way I turn. Well, let's look at the arrow and see. If I was really going to use this, that's the direction of the airflow right there. So the sticker is the direction of the airflow. So it would need to be in there this way. So you might be able to... You don't got nothing to screw it to there. It would hit those... It would actually hit those cross braces. But they're really thin. I suppose, you know... Yeah. You could zip tie it like that. But, uh... And, of course, take this this motor out. It's like, oh, it might still have electricity in it, but... There's no capacitors in these fans or anything. There shouldn't be anything still in there. By now, it's been a, at least a minute or two. Uh, and if I wired it up with 5 volts, that might be just right. I think 12 volts would make it sound like a jetliner taking off. And not, not with... See, it's already got its own blades. You don't need the blades. It's in there really good. I'm... The only thing is... Well... If I let's see, this is 2.45 amps. If I use the wall wart, like I said, I don't think I can. I can look, but I don't think I have. I might. Okay, now I may have a. Uh, I know I have one pretty beefy uh, HP server power supply, and it doesn't match any of this. Not server HP printer power supply. You know, bri uh, it's like a laptop bri looking brick. You know. Uh, it's a, it's got two or three voltages. One of them's around ten or eleven volts. Uh, but uh, maybe I can't remember. I'm not even exactly sure where it is. I have different boxes with stuff, but uh, that I would trust. Yeah, and if if it like had a six volt or <clears throat> eight volt or something like that, that could. That might be the right amount of voltage to give it the right speed and to not be too loud but do a good job. <coughs> now connecting to those tiny connectors, that's another story. You can't really make that out, can you? Uh, figure Well, I, I can figure it out by just probing, you know, ground it and then put... Uh, of course, it's got different wires um, because, you know, like one's going to switch on, one's going to switch. For all I know, they, the, ye the yellow and red may come on both at the same time to give it a really fast, loud speed. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I can probe it uh, to uh, find the right speed and noise level for what I need. <clears throat> Yeah, it would do it after if I took this out. I'm going to take it out anyway. Uh, I think I don't know if I need to do it right now, but that would be the way I could mount it. it oddly enough, it's just like perfect. And I might put it on the other side. Yeah, I would because I want the cover the, with the louvers to fit. But I would put it on the other side. Go ahead and get the see if I can get that motor out. So I think it's just going to press out. But I didn't know how hard it would be to press it out. It's going to be hard. It may not just press out. There may be something. I don't see what it would be, but holding it. It looks like it's just uh, because of the... I've seen this before, with, you know, with, well, plastic or sheet metal. The, the little splits, it, it's I think it is a press fit. It's just working better than I expected. Could be glued in. Yeah, it's probably glued in. It's sort of a semi-press fit, and it's probably glued. You're not going to get that blade off of there. I You know, I said before I thought about trying this blade on a, a vent fan motor because because I think those others are bigger than this four inch, and also they're they're noisy. I know that they uh, 
and they all, what happens well i actually got lucky the other day just by i don't remember how i, I think it's just one of those were oh i was watching my own video on the braun heater fan stuff and then it said you might also like this and i did it was one where it showed you how to uh showed you that when they get rattly it sound that rat horrible rattling noise all it is is the uh, can't show it to you but the, the shaft so this is the back side of the shaft the shaft you know goes through there and it's usually like a half moon type of thing not really a half moon but a round on one side flat on the other and uh it uh <clears throat> the fan it being plastic you know it wall it rat it with all the constant spinning it's it is vibrating and over the years they uh the whole wall is out and so it's it's rattling around and hitting the the cage you know the metal it's our metal cages in those and uh so um he said just get a new one and he showed he's doing it you know get a new one and put it on new the fan blade not the motor because the motor's just fine get a new fan blade put it on there and you're good to go again and so then i said well heck you might be able to just uh you know put a bunch of epoxy in that hole set it back on there and leave it alone for a day or two or three and let it really dry good you might be all right like that too uh, <clears throat> uh so i was thinking about maybe i really could use one of those if i can get it to not be too loud but uh, of course they run on 110 volts and that's what i do prefer since since i already i mean this switch would work even the even the uh breaker would work but i think it would have to be like 35 40 amps to kick it off well, if it's a dead short it would kick it off but um yeah i could use this but i'd be wasting the really good ac cord i'd have to you know i guess i could cut it back somewhere well, i could just cut it as long as it needs to be to get to my power supply or i could run well i could do is just run another i have probably just rewired again i've just already done it twice so i don't want to do it again but i could rewire it again with some appropriate dc wiring and still use the switch this switch will work on ac and dc and actually that that breaker would too not really a breaker it's a resettable fuse <clears throat> but uh that's what they call it yeah my thumbs are sore from all the work i've been doing that they've told for for well let's see the last day i really did any hard work was friday or saturday this is wednesday now these are still sore but they had come loose every one of my fingernail every i think it's i don't think there was any that hadn't and i don't know why they all did that but my thumbs were the worst but and these four fingers they had you know come loose between from the fingernails and they were hurting so much that i couldn't press on anything or and i just noticed that when i tried to press on that that this one really hurts that one's better but uh you know those my aller uh, well those are cold pills i take an allergy pill and a cold pill to get the right ingredients that i need uh you 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 pop them out of those little plastic things with the foil back well i can hardly ever get those to pop open anyway without making those come loose uh, there so uh, i used well, actually this little six inch scale it's a machinist scale i used to use when i was as a tool maker um better known as a steel ruler or something but uh anyway um a knife it's actually harder to do it with a knife but th it's really weird but i just put the corner of it and just poke them and then but and that's usually not too hard sometimes they're a little harder because i don't slit them wide enough or something but this whole ever since i, I you know separated my skin from my thumbnails and all my fingers too i could took everything out well i had to start cutting them open more to get them out the last couple of days it was just you know i could feel it it felt like it was splitting it even more and it probably was they weren't bleeding they just hurt and i've been putting and i think that did help a lot uh, i've been putting uh kind of going back and forth between a low and uh, antibiotic ointment in there just filling them up and leaving them for a while of course i wash my hands a lot so my hands are always dry cracked and peeling because i wash my hands a lot but that's a good thing right now those those uh, weird little habits that, that some people have like me like washing your hands too much that might save your life in a pandemic
<clears throat> so, so there. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm really getting tired. I mean, I've gone for so long now, three hours and forty five minutes. I doubt anyone will get this far into the video unless they really good or really like to skip through. But you don't know what's coming. Well, you don't know what's coming unless you skip through. So you might the boring part. Skip the boring parts, and you might find something interesting in a long video. Uh, it takes me long enough to do the work and make a live video. It takes you know always a minimum hour to set up. It's usually two or three, and then do the work and the video. So when, I can't remember when I started, but it's. 547 almost getting almost six in the morning I'm gonna say it was about midnight I can't remember now maybe a little after maybe one when I really got I don't remember when I started setting up I don't remember when I actually started doing the stream well I could count backwards but let's move on here I really want to get that out but I think it's going to take well I'm afraid that it really what they did was Put some super glue or something, something like that, on it, and shoved it in there, and now it's glued in. So, as a matter of fact, I think I might see some. Oh, huh? Is that in more than one place? One, I see plastic. That's probably what's glued. Can't really see any signs of glue. Wait, I think I see a little. What's it called? CA glue or something? There's some really super duper glue I've just learned about recently. CA glue is one I keep seeing that people use on like building model airplanes and stuff. RC or remote control airplanes. But there's one that I saw a guy was using for something, and he said, "Man, this stuff works better than anything I ever seen." And I I saved a screenshot of the bottle and kind of, I think I even put it somewhere where I hopefully could find it again, but usually I, I just, my screenshots, I just have them always go to the same folder, but then I only end up with 500 of them after a few, you know, after a year and I don't ever want to look through them. So I try to move them over into categories, you know, like a folder that is about that. But yeah, I'm going to, that's actually pretty important to the, all this. Let me get the endoscope. I think it's going to work again. Let's check it before I drag it down here. Yeah, I think it was just... I think it was just the light. Oh, great. I forgot to, that I was actually on it when I did that. Okay, so but if you can see... Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, yeah, I'll just pick it up. That little thing right there. Why don't I see that? There we go. Oh, I see. That sh cleary, shiny thing. There's another one. Let's see. It'd be a lot easier if I could. This thing goes on down. I've got it up about as high as it'll go. That's probably too close. <coughs> That's more like it. Yeah. There's one. They're not where I think they are because of the way this camera is. They're slots. And then... So I think those are what it is. They're either like a tight fit. I'm going to have to put it where I can see it. They may be the tight fit, what's causing the tight fit, or they may be... They're too uniform to be the glue, I think. But, uh, yeah, I kind of... I don't know if you can really tell what I could see looking at it with the magnifying glass, what it, the, what it is, but... It's not... They're very... They're very exact shape you know they're not just a drip of glue they're uh so um 
too tired to fool with it and get wor- uh, work. I'm getting. I'm really hungry too. I'm gonna have to stop and eat. But yeah, it it may. I got. It feels so tight in there that uh, it doesn't flex. It doesn't act like it would ever move. And the blade's in the way to try to work on it from this side. So. Uh, I mean, I might be able to, yeah, I might try. I mean, I think the first thing I would try is some alcohol and uh, maybe denatured alcohol. I have some in the garage. It seems to be better at cutting things. Uh, If it was anything like hot glue in that kind of material, then alcohol will dissolve it. Regular old rubbing alcohol will. But uh, let's go this way for now. Um, I've been bending over kind of natural, just by kind of instinctively staying close to the mic. Actually, I don't have to be any closer than right there, but uh, it's probably too close. Uh, <clears throat> um. trying to do that but the um, sort of bang I got my window open and can hear everything so much better I don't know if that picked up but it's uh, probably not on the SM58 I don't know if somebody it's first of all it would sound like a gun and we do have some people that like to do shooting at all hours of the night we got a target thing down the road or something and uh, <clears throat> which is really weird because we it, I don't think that's legal in the city limits of this town and the city limits you got to go five ten miles to get out of the city limits from here I think there's kind of you know how the lines will go this way and that uh, so I'm not sure it might not be as far but it, it sounds like they're like a half a mile away and shooting a big rifle or something anyway I haven't heard it lately but that sounded almost either like a first I thought it sounded like some kind of gun and I thought no nah, it sounded more like a, a wreck or a, somebody dropping a big bunch of metal off the back of a truck or something which it's almost six so people could be out there getting to work uh, anyway it just startled me <clears throat> um, and you can kind of see one of those deals right down below my finger there that's what's holding it I could tell that this is not that's metal but I got a feeling if I were to somehow put well like I don't have a press I was thinking if you did have a press you'd be able to bend that thing though and if I took a piece of wood and stuck it on there and hit it with tapped it with a hammer I might get it out okay but or it might just destroy the motor so I'll, I mean, it's, it's probably not any good, but I want to make sure I, if I'm wanting to send it back, I'm not, I don't want to tear anything up. Put it back like it was, put the original wire on it and put the cover on it and send it back. <clears throat> but, uh, but I think, see, if, if I go to buy, uh, let me put this away. Well, let's, let's get on the cam again like that put this up I have to get up to reach that okay, I made it uh, okay so um, I'm going to put this in its bag it's good to have the, that's anti-static bag you know it looks like it anyway uh, good to have that for electrical electronics parts I tell you what, if, if anything I ever bought used, I've never seen. I'm like, why didn't I always do that? You know, I've never seen such great quality to, uh, to where, you know, something that was made 10 years ago is in better shape than something brand new. Two and a half hours. And it's basically, and the way it, I think that bushing is worn out, is what I think. 
Yeah, it's not a bearing. It's it looks it looks like copper. It don't look like brass. It very much looks like copper. And I would guess that they discovered when people installed them like this, that's why they put it in that piece of paper that came with it. It doesn't have a lot of in you know a lot of play that way. A little bit about normal, what I would say. But hanging this way <coughs> must some I would guess somehow causes it to wear that quick, <coughs> and they didn't know it <coughs> when they designed it. <coughs> so. Uh, Really in co that's my coffee. There's not really anything left in there. <clears throat> I guess I should put this cover. Put the. I was going to show the couple things on the internet there right before I and then go and quit. But um, I'm going to put this cover back on there because I don't want to lose the, lose the uh, screws or anything. Or something get in there and, and completely mess it up, you know. But I don't think that the, this fan. I thought maybe if I took it out and didn't use it in that direction, it might be usable. I don't think so now. It's going to be tricky. It looks like to get that stab those holes. This is a magnetic screwdriver, but there we go. I got that one started. But I don't think these these are a little bit. Yeah, it's getting weak. I need to remagnetize it. Do you know how you do that? Yeah, quick. Car battery. I don't have. It's in the out in the garage. You get a piece of solid core wire. House like house wiring insulated wrap it around and around and around till it looks like a spring and then touch just touch it one to the power one to the uh, you know, hot one to the ground on the battery and uh, put some safety glasses on because you may have sparks of uh, lead melted lead coming hit you in the face and uh just go ch -ch -ch -ch. It's just about all it takes it'll scare you on a power if you got it well I got a like an 850 cold cranking out battery in my blazer that's what I usually use it'll scare you with that one and it will melt a, a eighth inch by deep by half inch uh, spot so don't touch it anywhere touch it on the outside of your battery term if you got the regular kind you know you can get way out if you got them side terminals i don't know i wouldn't even probably wouldn't do it on that kind of battery but uh that's how i've all i learned that when i back in the 70s and that's how i've always magnetized my screwdrivers and stuff and it lasts for a year or two or three and then it'll need to be done again or you can just leave them on a i've got some in my tool i've got a really nice strong earth magnet in my toolbox and i don't know where i got it it's got like a hook got metal on it and a hook it's like glued into a metal u-shaped thing and a hook on the top and it's not not really anything you can pick up with it that's what it looks like it's made for but i mean it's not strong enough to pick up heavy stuff I, it, i've used it before to tie a string on it and if i dropped a screwdriver or something metal in a place where i couldn't reach you know i've done it that way or or uh, clamp a pair of baby graph vice grips on it and you could just, you know, you just need another six inches or something. You could reach something. Uh, but anyway, I I don't know where I got it now or anything. But uh, so I'm going to go to the web here, and I'm going to – I forgot. There was one thing I, wanted, I was going to show was – oh, I want to show the kind of vent fans I keep talking about. <coughs> and uh, – I really, and also I want to um, go ahead and check my stream again.
it's weird being back on this computer after running that fast, powerful server machine for two couple of weeks. And I'm like, why is it so slow? What's wrong here? I didn't realize how bad this thing had gotten. Everything, it, everything. I thought some of the web pages weren't working well because they weren't written well. It was just machine just not being able to keep up. It's weird being back on this computer after running that. And, and I got to realize when I turn that on, you can't understand nothing because you're getting like a quadruple echo. <clears throat> and it keeps going after I shut it, I think. So, um, I forgot what I was going for. Boy, this is weird. I'm sitting, I'm not sitting right in my chair. I'm sitting straight up. I can't stand it. <laughs> but, uh, it's the only way I can do this workbench thing here. Let's see. Ah, uh, those bookmarks are only, only on the other machine. I don't sing my bookmarks because if, uh, I was doing it for probably a couple of years uh, when Firefox started offering that syncing everything. And one time I had, I had, uh, I used to have it, did I have, yeah, I had to do it automatically or I, I don't know. Anyway, one time I lost all my bookmarks. And I hadn't backed them up in a two, you know, month to three months, and I lost a whole lot of really important to me bookmarks. And so, I, and I had read about that happen. I think I might have already read about it before it happened to me, but on their site, you know. And anyway, so I, since then, I just manually back them up every when I think about it, and I don't. Uh, I can't risk anymore. I'm not on my home keys. Amazon. So I can go like well, go to my orders to show I'm not gonna go over this real a whole lot because I already did that the other day. It's still there for sixteen ninety nine. That's the uh pictures of it. And look at that. They talk about the Archimedes principle. That's that's what I call a squirrel cage fan. That's not anything like, if you may, may have noticed, uh, the fan blades on here. It doesn't show it. Somewhere I think, well, I showed the blades, but they're not a squirrel cage fan. They're, they're a different shape. They're not exactly the same as a, uh, well, like these duck fans that I'm fixing to show you one. But, uh, There's the picture that, you know, of it mounted up in the ceiling. Ceiling mounting in bathroom. And then I, I, one of the first things I noticed when I looked at the little manual that came with it, there's the blades. They're not anything like the squirrel cage. So that was a clue that I, that I guess I should have paid. Oh, it shows four screw holes and there's only two, which, you know, that's not surprising. Not a big deal. But I could drill more screw holes if I wanted them. I just didn't think it really needed it. But, uh, yeah. I bought it completely thinking that, you know, it was made to mount the way I needed it to be. And there wasn't a lot of reviews. Let's see. So, well, there seems like there's other people have bought them since then. Yeah, there was only like three reviews. So that one there, that one was there before. It says it turned backwards. That one says nice little fan, but it didn't work for them, so they did something else. Yeah, there's still only three reviews. It says six, but there's uh, we'll click on it and then and then it just says doesn't really say anything. Good for the price of it. So I thought it was worth the risk, ten bucks. And uh, yeah, there's still only three reviews. That's really weird. I noticed that. Uh, says six and there's no uh, I don't know maybe people give it stars but don't write a review they're counting them or something uh, that's the only thing I could figure but uh, I've noticed that a lot I always look at the reviews before I buy stuff uh, well, I have a list of you know save and compare I use that a lot 
Uh, there's a filter I may get. This is for a car, but I was thinking about getting a HEPA filter, but they really do restrict the airflow. I need a fan that can blow through whatever kind of filter I get. But see, I don't want bugs and mosquitoes and stuff to be able to come through. But no, even that's not been a problem so far as long as the fans run. Well, it didn't happen. Well, when I didn't have the fan in there, I had a uh, I had a filter over it, but it was one of those like kind of looks like uh, fiberglass. And I think it, it does make you itch, but not like fiberglass does. It's blue. It's really kind of loosely woven, but yeah, you can see through it, the light through it, but it. it I didn't have any, but when I had it up there, I didn't have any bugs or anything come in on me. And I, I've, only, I've since then, I've only had, uh, I've kept this fan that I showed at the beginning of this video running, and I have, I had a, a thing, I had a couple of mosquitoes, and but the thing is, sometimes they come in because well, when I open the window, they always come in through there. I think there's gaps on the sides, and some of the mosquitoes I've noticed are so tiny, they could get through the screen, you know, and. Uh, so, I'm, but not not a bunch of them, just like one here and there. But here's the duck fan that uh, that you see a lot of, and uh, I almost bought one of these, but then I knew I would have to do something. I wanted the. There's a good picture of how. Let's go ahead and go to that. Um, that kind of blade. I remember when I saw them. I was like, oh yeah, I remember those from when I was like a kid. I used to see them very young adult uh, but I th when they get old I think they tend to rattle uh, but here's the whole design it's just got like a U bracket inside of the tubing and I've got t tubing and I've got uh, fan motors those brawn fan motors that are the same basically the same kind of motor that one looks a little different uh, uh, but this didn't have you know didn't have any louvers and so I was looking at another 12 bucks for uh, a louver cover for it so I thought well that little plastic one has it all and if the worst case scenario I could just end up using the uh, louvers and stuff for it kind of looked at this one I almost got this one see the one that I got where is it uh, does it say somewhere it says 33 dB. Somewhere, I thought it said the CFM. Let's see. It might not actually say the CFM. It's another one. It doesn't look like it's given the CFM. Now, there's a brawn, <coughs> just a fan all by itself. But I know how loud those are. I've got, I've got three of those. We got well. We got a small one, but like that, but with a heat lamp in the little bathroom, and it's rattling like crazy. And the heat lamp. Uh, well, first the bulb, I thought the the bulb went out, and I put another bulb in it, and then it just quit working, and I never have got it apart to look at it. But I figure the wires might have melted or something. Yeah, there's no actual rating of the CFM. It's not completely wimpy, but it's not real strong. I don't get the feeling of it. I couldn't guess the CFM because I haven't hit, you know, stuck my face into that many fans that, that I knew what the CFM was. But, <clears throat> but I've been comparing all the different ones I've been looking at. And, uh, like, I have a frame of reference for the Braun ones the wrong brand for the bathroom vents and i've noticed that any of them that are have that kind of motor <coughs> if they have that kind of motor <coughs> and then uh, uh, they're going to be pretty darn loud if if you know the more the cfm it seems like the more louder they are to me so you can tell about that by the comments too but somebody wrote in there in their answer 200 com what the heck is a com i've looked at the the other you know, like the other ratings they use, there's nothing called COM that I can find. That's another, that says it's 100, but that's, uh, you may also consider, that's not this. See, so yeah, that brawn one, it says it's 50 CFM, and I was really thinking I'd have wanted between 75 and 100 at least CFM. But then when I, I got pulled into the bargain there, you know, $10 one, well, 16 was buy off. 
so it's like eleven dollars. Mm. And uh, I looked at those a lot. Oh, I'm doing this again, aren't I? I for I thought I'd remember in my head that my duck was six inch, so I looked at six inch fans for almost a whole day. And this one had good ratings. And uh, I almost got it until I saw the one I have here. But it had a pretty good ratings. Better, not great. See, I like to get things that are no less than 70% five star. But uh, <clears throat> so that, yeah, I showed that one and that one. These are the first ones I came up when I started searching, but those are basically, they have good ratings. This brand here, really good ratings. That's a four inch. But uh, the thing I didn't like about them is th they're made for stereo cabinets. Well, they blow the wrong way for one thing. The grill, see, they're blowing through the grill instead of they're going the opposite direction, but they have speed control. But well, the reason I did, didn't really want to spend another five bucks to get that is because really all they have is computer fans. So some of them are, so I think those might be about 80 millimeter fans and the other ones are like 120 millimeter or close to it. But they're DC fans. And I really didn't like the idea of, like I said, putting a AC to DC converter up in the closet, you know, out of sight where you can't see it at all ever you know i don't hardly get in there you know, i've been in there more now than i have in the last 10 years because my clothes that i wear all the time my sh if i get in there it's just to get a pair of jeans <laughs> my clothes stay in there so long i have a bunch of nice flannel shirts and stuff but i don't well the, you, these last five plus years have been a lot warmer it's not even cold in the winter that much around here uh <clears throat> some but except for it'll hit you like when you least expect it and it'll be down to like 22 degrees, you know, 80 degrees one day and 22 the next, you know, but, uh, but these have, but they just have a regular old wall, oh, it runs off of five volts, and you can plug them into uh, a computer USB if you want, and then when the computer comes on, it comes on, or the device, so they were saying, this is aimed at stereo devices, you know, home entertainment stuff, and they were saying, could do that but then that told me that that's why i said oh they're just computer fans and if they run on see computer fans run on 12 volts as a general rule or some there are some that'll run on five but a fan that'll do much moving of air runs on 12 volts a computer fan, dc fan so i thought and some people said they were good some people said they don't move enough air and i figured for what i needed they weren't going to move enough air now here's another one of those uh, six inch Fans. I think this one might have a little better. It's got a it's got a speed controller with it, and uh, oh, that's a six inch. I don't think that other one, that four inch, had a speed controller. And these are what I was looking at at first because I had not went out and measured my uh, duct pipe. I have a piece of duct pipe and a flexible hose that used to be on that dryer vent. See this is well. This this brand has, I think that's the one I already showed you has a, has a four inch, but uh, and it's kind of hard to tell because you know uh, when it's same same brand. It, it, this could be re uh, five out of five. Oh, it's only one review. No wonder it's a five star. So you know that that's not a very good way to tell if it's any good or not. Uh, not having any more reviews than that. It says six ratings. I guess that's what they're doing. I guess they're, uh, yeah, that one has a speed control. This may be a different brand than the first one I was looking at, showing. But that still makes me need to uh, buy or build, you know, I, well, I had to buy the louvers, and this is something to, you know, I'm going to try to make, you know. I mean, sure, you could do it out of wood or metal, but who would want to do that? I mean, somebody would, but and there's a speed controller that you can just add on to them, but that's a big spend of money. There's a good price on a what sounds like a really good fan. That's actually a radiator fan, and uh, but I figured it's going to be 
they said it wasn't too loud under the hood of their car. They one of the one of the reviewers said that. But uh, yeah, see that that's that guy that guy or girl. I guess it's a guy. He put him he put him there for his uh, add some more cooling to his vehicle. He said they weren't very loud and they worked really well and uh, but when you look at the specs and see they've got well, it looks like they've only got five ratings. Sometimes you get into stuff that well, it looks like they actually have some reviews there. But uh, so I think it's pretty good. But um, a 12 volt, 80 watt, boy, that would definitely take up. I mean, there, my old computer power supplies. I'd have to take one that actually in a machine that would run. Otherwise, I don't have any out. Uh, what I, I did have a few extras, but when I was building my power supply amp, I blew out two of them because I was I wanted to get 24 volts, so I ground lifted one, and I was test testing with my old a realistic multimeter and they have really long leads on them and I accidentally grounded I did it to two of them uh, blew one out got another one ground lifted it and I did it again and then the third one I finally got it all you know got it together without blowing it up boy if you're ground lifted and you, it, normally if you short a, a computer power supply it just shuts down not when it's ground lifted it blows so um, I'm talking about desktop computer, computer power supplies, not servers. But uh, anyway, I don't. I think it'd be too loud. Uh, although I think it's probably the most durable fan you could get. It's made to work under the hood of a car. You know, with all kinds of for twenty. You know, for twenty-two dollars, uh, and it's six inch, uh, which is too big. But you know, I could probably. Uh, Figure out a way to it will buy a reducer of some you could buy a reducer out of sheet metal or, or get a, I wouldn't use PVC uh, that heat would probably warp it if at, if at the very least on you know coming from that heat or, uh, in a hot day it could be dangerous I'd be worried about it catching on fire <clears throat> so uh, that is and I and I had already had these like different I thought about just buying a pack of 120 millimeter fans and using them, but then that's you got to use a wall wart or, or a computer power supply to run them. You can just run one of those on a wall wart, I'm pretty sure, because they're not high amperage, I don't think. I don't know if it tells you. Yep, there we go. Four pin. So you couldn't control the speed without a power supply and then a way to talk to the power supply. And uh, 57 point, that's not bad. That's uh, somewhere I got the idea of this fan of, that I have is 33. Maybe I found it somewhere else besides the page where I bought it, but uh, maybe I'm thinking of different ones. Some of those du real regular duck fans, they've got, they range from 30, advertised 33 to 30, 75 CFM. Uh, but the noise level is not too bad. That's not going to be too bad. 20, 25 dBA or dB. Most most time we people just say dB. But uh, I think they had pretty good, decent ratings on those. Yeah, they're pretty decent. You see, people do all kinds of things with them. See, they, they're venting a room with it. And that's a, oh, I think that's a, Bitcoin mining rig or something. That's what it looks like. A bunch of GPUs, video cards, and they they said that these are, it's bad. They were really mad, bad because those are coming loose. Well, that happens on those things all the time. Those Molex connectors, you snap them back in. I mean, it's if if the snapper inside is broke, that's that sucks. But what will happen is this will get stuck on the. Uh, that's the female. It, it's always <clears throat> see. Where's that? The, in the, it's really hard. With, it, it's always you got to go in circles to remember which one's actually the male and female. They look opposite to what they are. <laughs> look at the connector, not the not the sh sleeve for it. But anyway, I've had that happen. But they get hung. They get kind of. They've been hooked up for a long time. They get kind of corrosion built up in there and pull them off from me, or they might get squished and then shoved on there. 
and uh, they'll do that. But then you can just snip them back in place. So I've ne- uh, never had one. And those are gonna always get crooked. Just straighten them out. That's the male. That's the female. But if you just look at the cover, then you might think that's the female because it's got the bell pole, you know. But this is the female, this is the male. And, uh, but I've had those go, those always go crooked. Uh, you straighten them out and they're fine. I mean, uh, they may be worse than he's ever seen, or I, it might be worse than I've ever seen. I don't know. I didn't buy the fans. But anyway, fans like that could work. I don't know what they're talking about. I don't think there's a, contr- uh, a controller that comes with it. But they're doing it for everything, uh, just like I, I do things. They're not even one one person bought those for a computer that did a review. That's funny. But, uh, and I can use the extra ones in my old computers that need fans. I can change from 80 millimeter to 120 on most of them. There's enough, enough big enough slot. Some of them don't have a big enough hole. You could always just drill more holes in the thing if you wanted to go to town and work in them. But uh, the the ones I have bought are like whisper quiet compared to 80 millimeter fans, and they move more air. The the machine runs cooler. But uh, again, I would have to supply it with DC. And in order to... Let's go ahead and go in there. In order to... uh, Control it the speed it'll go either way three pin or four pin that's all right but actually all i'm going to have is a, a hot in the ground you know uh, all that fancy stuff comes from the power supply but the uh, bios is what tells the power supply what to do so it's like you'd have to plug it into a computer for it to and i actually thought okay i think i may have another power plug inside of the server or maybe I could buy another really long cable well a, a cable that could reach to the back at least I actually there's a couple of more connectors on the one I have in there but I that darn video card needs 150 watts so I wouldn't add, add anything else to that cable but I think there's another plug in there that I could use for power and uh, I'd have to get another long one but kind of like what I bought which I don't, what did, I don't remember what I paid for it now, but, uh, and then they would come on and off with the machine. If I shut the machine down, it would go off. But that's when you then, so then if you're going to, if you did, if you're going to turn the fan off or let it go off automatically like that, then you definitely need flappy doors to close so the cold air doesn't come in on you or, or, or all your air conditioning doesn't go out. Uh, probably wouldn't be a problem there. So I, I don't think, that it's the, it's in the winter. Um, it's it's coming up. You know, it's September, and I've already had well, every night's been chilly since I did that. Actually, it's, no, not every night. Some nights it's been hot because it was hot outside, like eighty five or something you know, at night. But uh, and raining and humid and uh, me, I just wake up sweating. You know, but uh, depending on the weather. So that's what I'm saying. I don't want to, to be so changed by the weather my temperature in here and the humidity so i want those little flappy doors to shut and uh, i want to be able to put i want it to be strong enough that i could put a filter on it and it still work so that i don't have uh, the one one thing i'm concerned about is uh, you know breathing stuff that i'm allergic to uh, coming from the attic Uh, and that old insulation that they put in these attics i really don't know what kind it is me and my old neighbor he he uh well he grew up in the house next door and and he 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 lived there most of his life until about three or four years ago and he he got married and bought a house you know and in the same in our same town and so his parents still live there and he well he he was coming over there they still had a travel trailer and he had some couple of computers in there that he used to play with and he gave me those and he was cleaning out that travel trailer you know he was getting rid of all kinds of stuff that he had more than one place but he brought me one from his house one from there uh, a seat uh, a, a ups uh, battery backup which the batteries are bad but he thinks that it works and uh and a monitor or no i want i had two crt monitors that were bad and i gave him them to go take to the scrap day the cleanup day in town and uh, put the 
get rid of them and he gave me he had two that worked but i didn't have room for two of them so i got an 18 inch crt i had two crts one was a flat screen 17 inch flat screen but it worked but it was smoking and sparking and so it was too dangerous to use and that really is a shame because it actually happened because i bought an adapter to be able to plug in uh, the dvi d cable into it and instant i plugged it in and it shut down i just thought hmm and i did it again and again and then it started smoking and then i'm like you idiot why'd you keep doing it so uh it was shutting down to protect itself and i kept doing it so um i saw that i started and i was looking at regular room fans and i was ran into that dehumidifier and i thought mm, that's kind of cool but i did, didn't need that some more oh i already showed those so all these kind of things that i think i will get one day i said i wasn't going to go over all this but i'm doing it anyway i'm curious now i just i can't remember all the different fans that i had looked through so yeah that was my first one i thought i might get but i kept thinking of, and oh i didn't say a duck fan like that i've got the brawn motors uh, I'm not sure how big the blades are, but if they are too big, I could always, I'd have to buy something. I don't think I got anything to make. Well, I have some sheet metal. That'd be hard work, hard to do without tools, without sheet metal tools. But, uh, anyway, um, uh, the brawn fans and the, and the duck stuff I have, and, uh, I could, I'm sure I could make a little U bracket. Uh, to, to make me one of those without buying anything but i know they're well i know they're loud as heck uh, but i think one of the biggest things of them being loud is because they're inside of a metal box it's like a metal speaker you know but it's not just that they're loud in the room which that would drive me crazy but they actually put so much noise up into the attic that it bothers anybody uh, in the living room or in the bedroom that's close to the bathroom you know so i can't have a really loud fan I don't want one in this room for you know to all these reasons so i'm trying to go through there and it, ju it jumps it makes a funky sound can't just grab that blue bar and go down smoothly it jumps as you're going along as it loads the page those were 27.99 now they're 40. uh yeah that is a brand that i have really liked when i bought them motor rent professor actually bought that I haven't used it yet <coughs> what's that video card whoa break me out video card that uh, okay yeah it's still streaming okay now this is what uh, actually the one that's in the bathroom this is it's it says universal yeah okay that says vent fan the heater uh my vent fans all work it's the uh and i'm glad i didn't go ahead and buy that i had not looked at my old videos or going out there and taking the stuff's all in boxes and stuff and stacked up and I get it down but this is what the vent fans look like let's see if we can find out this is this is exactly what i've been talking about for the brawn uh, this is a replacement that would work in the brawn 655 and you can reverse the direction by just unbolting this and flipping it around. You know, flip the motor around the other way. Uh, <clears throat> so I think it tells you how to do that in, in here on this page somewhere. It does on some of them. Uh, for as far as the <coughs> brawn uh, exhaust fan, it's really easy to replace them. And you just plug in. They're literally, literally plug and play. Okay, now here's all those measurements, but I didn't see the, uh, yeah, they're not too big. Two and a half by two, basically, inches. So, and is that a, let's see. Yeah, it's what I was talking about. See, round on one side, flat on the other. I'm trying to see the. You can't. Uh, when I try to move my. It keeps moving on me when I don't expect it to. Uh, those may not 
be inches. This may be centimeters or millimeters or something. They're not making sense. I'm almost certain those shafts are quarter-inch shafts. And that says 0.19. Well, it could be. That would be just right at 200 thousandths. That may not be an actual full quarter inch. And there's threads on the other end down here. And that is usually rust real bad, and it's hard to get the blade off. That's where the, well, no. Some of them have, I don't remember. I remember trying to get one out of the, out of its place, and I left, never got. Oh, the one with the squirrel cage. So, see, I was thinking that, uh, I was only thinking of the squirrel cage ones, and that's actually the heater fan. Those, the heater motors are what uh, the th the thermal fuse blows has blown on three of them that we've had now, and I figured that all out and learned about it a couple several years ago, but I didn't. Well, I ended up finding some. I got like a ten pack of thermal fuses for real cheap, and then I never did put them on any, any anything because uh, I didn't fill up to get up in roof to do the other one and then i get it feeling better and i spend two weeks on this little project you know and have all these other things i need to do but uh, um where's that picture there there's only one picture of that but this is the vent fan what it looks like and if that's four inch then just mount that in some tube and i'd have one of those um, I, if any, you know, those fans are okay. I think the blunt, the motors, I've got two of those that are, they're, you, you know, been used for years, but they're, they're working fine. But the ones that turn the squirrel cages for the heater, they didn't, I could stop them with my fingers that's sitting on the bench. So I think they got, you know, when motors get old, they just lose their strength. And even if they don't have any short windings or anything, I don't really understand exactly why they do that, but um, they do. I've known it ever since I was a kid. Uh, I've experienced, you know, learned learned that that happens to them. But uh, I'm I, the thing is, I didn't. I thought we'll do all that work just to find out that. Uh, so I went and bought the other one just to find out. So now I've done already done three times more work than I would have done. Uh, <coughs> just to find out that they're too loud, you know, or too weak. Oh, um, well, the vent fans are not, should be not worn out, but the ones with the, I was originally thinking of the squirrel cage ones, and then I had to kind of turn around in my head. I was like, well, wait a minute, are they? I was thinking that both of the fans were squirrel cage fans is what I'm trying to say. And this one, just another one I put in there, I think it had, you know, it doesn't seem to have better ratings, but it might have been a lot cheaper when I first found it. That little blade is a little, little different, and I actually think that might be how ours is. Uh, those are holes right there, and uh, the air uh, can pass through, you know, there. No, I don't know if one would be better than the other, but anyway. Uh, <coughs> uh, the squirrel cage fins, well, they, I think they probably put out more air. Um, they're not as loud. They're loud, but they're not as loud. I'm looking at my, make sure my stream's still working. I'm not talking to myself. Uh, they're not as loud as these. These are just, man, raise the roof loud. And then, you know, here's a brand that I've bought some of these fans. Uh, I think there's two with an A in them. I'm not sure if they're all. Anyway, um, these I had been researching for. Like, I've got a, have a red fan on one of my machines that uh, quit, went bad, and I wanted to get another one because I like the, it has red lights on the front, and red fan, light, you know, it's a red LED lit fan. So that's what I was looking at for that. It went up. Should have bought it when it was seven ninety nine. So did that one. A lot of these, uh, you know, you, a lot of times if you'll wait, they'll go down. Well, they'll go down like at certain times of the year, holidays and stuff, and then they'll go back up. These were the first ones I found that had good reviews, and 
They were fourteen ninety nine, and I really knew that was a good deal, but I didn't buy them, and now they're twenty three. But those are the first ones I showed there are seem to be all right too. <coughs> they look better. They have a nicer design, <coughs> and uh, my old machines need two or three pins. And if you put a four, I've tried it. If you put a four pin, I can't remember. Well, yeah, I think if you can put a four pin fan on them, well, like with this adapt, this is one of those combos, three or four. But the problem is they won't have any speed control. If they're really, they're really designed for four pin, but they have that little pigtail with the three pin on it. And uh, that one is way up. And they'll run full blast. And they'll, and they'll drive you crazy. Speed control won't work. I bought that, I believe. Yeah, it says it. That's been good. No trouble whatsoever. I bought those for 222 No, I have 287 when I bought them. Two of them have already gone bad, like within a year, of, less than a year, six months of putting them in. I wrote notes on them. I've been using this to kind of remind myself about things. You know. <coughs> So, that is the end of my fan story, I think. Uh, this is going to have to be another day. Yeah, I don't want to do anything to get that fan out of there. Unless I'm sure. I don't want to send this back. <coughs> um... But like, well, I had that out a minute ago, but let's see. I, I don't even really remember now exactly, but I believe this one, yeah, it does have one way it goes on there. This thing is supposed to set. That is so hard to work with. It's so small. Oh, you can't see what I'm pointing at. This uh, this little junction deal here. <clears throat> I'm seeing these on videos all the time, the bigger ones that they're using in house wiring, and I think that's what I gather is they use them in Europe for years, and they're beginning to use them in the U.S. and Canada now. <clears throat> I don't really like them. I like wire nuts quicker. I think they're more secure. I've always been around, you know, always seen things like this and uh, different side of different electrical equipment and it's so easy to miss the wire they always have like a big enough hole that well that you can put different gauges of wire in them but uh, I'm talking about this thing right here get on the other camera I think you can see it better <coughs> right down here so this little they have a name they call them and I can't remember it but uh, I like to never got these in there because I couldn't see I can't see and, uh, and I think I was doing it on the endoscope trying to show it in the video too. But anyway, uh, or did I just do that? I think I just did it. But, uh, so, um, but I like this. It doesn't take a lot to make it open up air-wise. I mean, this thing will open it up. It did open it up in any position. I mean, well, you know, uh, vertical or horizontal. But uh, not after, not after I, I got it installed, and it could, it could only open like about half of them. When I had it in there, like I know, like I wanted it, you know, like I. Part again. It's only one screw that holds that. It goes right there, but it's an adequate. But, but uh, there we go. Yeah. See, that's the closed position. Now, if it's mounted like that, and when I before I ran it for two hours. It would open that easily, but that, but uh, when I mounted it the way I needed it, um, then I can't you can't see the louvers, but uh, it would open about half of them, and not the other half, and they were fluttering in the br slight breeze, and uh, oh I didn't that's the thing the dryer vent I know I have I think I'm it well I've gone on and on too long. Uh, most people know what a dryer vent looks like that goes through the wall. You know, it's a round 
uh, on the inside you'll have a piece of metal usually well yeah it's always metal because plastic will melt piece of metal uh, four, about four inch duck and then duck uh, pipe like this piece here this will just fit inside of of where the four normal where I took out the four inch it was about four by six you know four inch duck was about 16 inches long or 20 inches long and it had a the other, other end of it had some flex holes on it I had been I had used it and for years, <clears throat> and then took it off the dryer. I mean, they're putting one going out the roof. And uh, uh, so, but I didn't need anything long. This was actually longer than what I needed. So that was why I used two befores and not one bys or anything as my to hang it from because I was trying to get more thickness. And I still, it still was sticking up in there a little further than I wanted to because I wanted that door to be able to flop and it was holding it open. So. I ended up putting the two two thicknesses of the weather stripping, but then when I screwed it down, it squished down to near, to nothing. Finally, after after I started looking at how tight it was, I, well, I loosened it up enough for it to expand just a little bit, not to rock or anything. So uh, that was all good, and this is another piece of, of just a different, you know, a newer. Well, that was some. I used up one of them that had a little left, and then this was a new one, a brand new one that I had out in the garage, and that's where it moved it when I stuck it up in the uh, <coughs> in there. And so I just left it like that. <coughs> so I had a good seal, didn't have air blowing out the sides, and I didn't have a way for you know bugs and stuff to come through easily anyway. And so I was, thought I was all set. And then after uh, I sat here and watched the videos and just tested it out and relaxed for a while before I went to bed, and it was about two and a half hours. And I I, I thought I heard it. I thought, am I hearing? What is that? Is that the server? Is that this thing? And then when I I said, well, I'm going to check on it before I go to bed. And I still thought everything was okay. And it was just rattling. And we'll have to open the door, but see how loud it was. And, and uh, I don't remember now if... Uh, I could tell any difference in the temperature or in the in the closet or anything like it had gotten hotter, but uh, anyway, it ain't gonna you know, it, it's no good. It's already no good. So unless I want to use the louvers, and, and this and the louvers, or well, I, I didn't show any of that. Uh, well, I didn't have my links, but not on the server is what happened. But uh, it uh, one of these without a fan. And I don't even remember if they had louvers that moved. I think they might have just been a grill. Uh, was 12, 13 bucks, uh, the cheapest I saw. And because uh, I was thinking about buying that so that I'd have what I needed. And this is good because these louvers don't move. And so I could actually put a filter over this. This would actually kind of look nicer like it is, but that's not the main, you know, at that important in the roof of the closet where you never see it anyway. But these lube, this, I could put my filter over the outside of this, still be able to get to it to clean it or replace it or whatever. And uh, those would still function. So that's why I really don't like, you know, when something, you could buy something and it turned out to be bad, I like to send it back and get my money back just out of principle, but. I'm going to do what's best for my needs, you know. Uh, and I thought of that when I bought it. I thought, well, if the fan's no good, it looks like a decent grill, you know, in the loop, in the op automatic opening and closing louvers. So, uh, and if, 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 uh, uh, and I did try, let's see, what did I get? I only I went out and looked at my, my old fans. I have a few that work, and I only saw one eighty millimeter, and I plugged it in. It was a two wire too, so it wouldn't be. Uh, uh, like I said, when you plug in a three, uh, I think it's a four. My three wire might be okay because it's got positive negative and sense, but four wire has positive negative sense, and I guess I think this. I thought the sense was the speed control. Oh yeah, the sense. Is the voltage reading so the positive the three wire may just be positive negative and speed control 
four wire would be positive, negative, speed control, and sense speed. Because you in some biases you can see the fan speed. Uh, and a regular desktop is what I'm talking about. <coughs> so uh, and of course you get all that cool stuff in the HP, you know, in the in a server. And and you can see it through ILO from whatever any machine that you can log in with. Uh, you could do it and since mine set up with a GUI de, you know desktop system on it, I could do it from there if I if, if I had an old browser on there, and I will, I'll do I'll just install that uh, XP virtual machine and do it that way, and it won't take forever to load up and everything on that machine. But uh, so it may be that even if this motor is useless already, uh, I may be able to use the the whole case. The vent, you know, and just like I've got it designed here, the way I've wired it up and everything. All I'd have to do if I use that one of those brawn fans that I have, uh, I I kind of think that those blades that are in there are uh, quite a bit bigger than four inch, maybe six inch or something. They may not be, and there is. I kind of think that uh, I think one of those motors would fit inside of here. And I could probably mount this on. I think it would just fit. I think it might just go right on. So if I get that out without damaging these blades, because this is a, it's not loud. It's really quiet. So with, and that motor is going to probably be more faster or more powerful than this one, which would be good. And if it didn't raise the volume, so I, maybe I can just put one of those other Braun motors in this and, and it'll be all self-contained. And if I did need it to be any more length, like to fit the motor in there or something, then I can use some of that metal duct that I have. It'd be a little more work, but because then that's going to drop this down, and then I'd end up probably having to put. Oh, I forgot. Hang on. <coughs> I can show. It. I forgot. I, I lied to you. Oh crap! I lied to you and didn't realize it. Um, it wasn't just two befores and this. It was two befores and this to get to get that at just the right depth, and it, you know, with my uh, dryer fan. So I, I cut those out and you know drilled them and everything. <clears throat> So that's how I had it. Uh, those are spacers. That's all they are. And uh, I didn't. I didn't permanently mount them to the uh, to the two before. Well, it was just you know to get them in the right location. It was easiest to make to set them to fit this. I put them in there, and then I, dr I drilled back through that way, and then you know. <clears throat> finish the hole out with it off. I think I well, I think I just uh, I think I set them in there and just marked the hole with the drill. Or yeah, I think I marked it with the drill. I don't think I used a pencil on that. I wanted it to be because that's more accurate. Actually, you'll get what you're gonna. You, that, then you know that's exactly what you're gonna get. And uh, I was gonna screw these to the two befores, and then I realized well, there's no need in doing that. This holds them in there, and it's not like they're you know gonna move it's not in a car or <laughs> a truck or something you know it's not gonna be no rattling and vibration until that motor boy out and then it was rattling and vibration <laughs> but uh yeah don't don't buy one of these fans expecting it to be a good fan for darn sure i mean you think something that was kind of crappy on to me it's something lasts a year like those brawn fans that they uh they overheat and blow their thermal fuse uh, the last two that's blown let's see no three i think i think maybe if i remember right the first one that oh yeah okay they've just been getting from good to bad to worse as well uh the original one we put in lasted seven to ten years I bought and, and and it was real expensive at that time to buy the fans. You couldn't find them all separate like that. Uh, uh, 
like I just showed you, at a cheap price, and uh, I couldn't. And it was like $45, $55. Well, the whole thing is $65. The, the whole unit, you know, with the heater, the exhaust, the box, the plastic grill, everything. So I just bought a whole nother one. <clears throat> and then just, but it's real hard to get the box out of the ceiling and all that. So I just plugged the new stuff in. So it's plug and play. Well, plugged it in. And the next one lasted a year and the heater fan again. So I ended up doing the same thing again. This is the last time I bought any was like three, three, four years ago now. Uh, the next one lasted about a year and the heater fan went out. And that during all that time, I learned what was going well like i said uh, i learned it was a thermal fuse i ended up even getting some <clears throat> but uh it seems that the fans are probably too weak to use anyway i uh, got some i don't know i guess i just thought well it wasn't too much to get them and i thought i'll try it and i never did because uh because my, my health is always up and down but uh <clears throat> uh so the, the one in there is blown. It's bad, I'm, I think. I haven't taken it out to look at it yet, but I'm pretty sure it'll be another blown thermal fuse. And it's been up there like that for two years, maybe even three. The exhaust fan works fine, and we've just been using I don't use a heat. I don't need a heater. I just take, when I take a shower, it gets too hot in there for me anyway, winter or summer. <clears throat> so, uh, but uh, they, they'll use a space heater we already had. And then the, the one in the little bathroom. In, in the meantime, it uh, it gave, like I said earlier, the uh, the heat lamp went out, and, I, and it was just a it was a bad lamp. So I got another one, and it didn't work a week at the most, and it went out. I don't even remember, not very long, and it and it was just there's just nothing there, it's, you know. And the lamp seems fine. I I don't know. I might have taken it out and tested it, but uh, and its fan is rattling like crazy. If I was using that bathroom all the time, I, I probably would have fixed it already. But uh, I haven't taken it down, any of it down or anything. I looked at it, and it's actually going to be harder to get the fan out of there than it would be. Uh, I think you might have to take the whole box out or something to get the fan out of that one. be harder than the big one in the big bathroom. <clears throat> but uh, it's really, really simpler. The only hard part is getting up. See, I, I when I'm feeling... My health is bad. I have to hang on to the walls to keep from falling just to walk. And I crawl up on, you know, ladders and work over my head. And, of course, it, there's so much dust in there it collects in those things. You know, you need to vacuum it first or you're going you're gonna to be in a bad way with allergies, you know. And you can see how much trouble I have just sitting there in a room with the window open. So, so that's all my excuses for why I hadn't got that done. I, f I keep thinking about it because I've been working so much on this and thinking about using those some of those fans that I have from those things. And I saved them for parts, you know, for either that or other types of projects. I thought, well, I might hang, well, like, uh, hang one in the garage to suck up fumes from gluing and soldering and stuff like that, but I never did, never did that. But... Uh, it's been years since I've done a project like this, with this much work into it. <laughs> it's not a lot, but <clears throat> it, it is for me nowadays. So I, I actually, once I got it done, I was kind of like, oh, that's cool. I'm, that's, that's kind of fun to do that, you know. But uh, <clears throat> I wonder where that screw went for that. Kind of thinking about putting the lid on it and putting the screw in it, but I don't know what. I put the screw now. Be nice to find that. I think I put it in a little. You know, it's a big bottle. Let me grab it and see if, see if I know where it is because I don't want to lose it. <clears throat> oh, I, I just remembered the original. Once I mounted it in the attic in this kind of orientation. There wasn't enough room. This is the one screw that holds that cover on. There wasn't enough room for me to get any kind of screwdriver I have in there except for a right angle screwdriver. And the original screw was pretty wonky and it didn't like any of the screwdrivers I had. It was a crappy screw. It's kind of like 
if you're if you uh, I didn't know it when I was a kid, but when I work on the motorcycles, my Honda Yamaha that my brother had, my younger brother, I was always working on them for him. Uh, the case, screws on the case. I had, all, I had screwdrivers the right size, but they still wouldn't grab. And uh, I learned to get them off by hitting them with the screwdriver and, uh, I mean, a hammer until they kind of came loose and then getting them. Or sometimes I had to put vice grips on them or something. Or I don't think I had vice grips back then in the 60s. I don't know if they had those like we have now back then. But I'd use pliers or water pump pliers or something. Anyway, it really was hard to get them on and off. And I don't remember when I learned. I think I learned it when I was like 30 years old or something. That that's a Japanese screw size. It's not a it's not a Phillips screw. It's a something else they call it, and it's it's made different. And if you buy that Japanese screwdriver, then it'll work just fine. And I see it in videos all the time now. <clears throat> I like to watch videos and learn learn more about working on those old motorcycles now than I ever knew back then. I could always get them running good, pretty you know, and all that. Unless something was remember that Honda Mini Honda Fifty Mini Trail. That carburetor just wore out, and I'd fiddle and fiddle and fiddle with it, and it would run pretty good for a month or so, and then it'd get all messed up again. I finally realized that it was just wore out. The uh, plunger that was in the throat that did the air fuel, air fuel mixture was is always getting stuck, down or up, you know. But anyway, that but the screw uh, was so hard to get in with, you know, with full access. I decided, I looked, and I had some, uh, what are those things? I don't know what I did with the one I had in it. It may be. I, I, had, I have a whole bunch of them outside. Here they are. But I had brought, put some in here, because I guess because I thought they'd be a good thing to have. Um. So I think I'll just put one in it so that it'll be together and not flopping around. Little black screw with an, and those are those, those other ones were very rounded. One that came with silver, you can't see that. Uh, very rounded head, and this one's got, stick enough you can get a hold of it with, uh, pliers or anything like that if you need to so uh, that's what I use so that actually I think they might be a little bit bigger than the original so I don't think the original would f stay in there anymore It's really weird. It feel it. It doesn't ever want to hit it just right, and it's great, no problems. But if you, it acts like it don't want to go on there. Okay. And it flops out anytime you. Yeah, that other one. This screwdriver is one of my favorite screwdrivers, and it just kept slipping out, slipping out. This one grabs just like it should. That screw. So that's what I need to use in it anyway. That'll keep it from uh, um, the the wires getting broken or anything. They keep dangling out of there. So. I don't know how I managed to just sit here and talk for another hour, but I sure can do it. When I get to going on about this stuff, whether it's computers or little stuff like this, I can just go talking, talking. Okay, so um, I was hoping to actually test out other fans, but an hour ago I decided I'm. It's getting too too late. For and for me, since I've been up since like noon yesterday, uh, I'm hungry and tired. And so, what do I do? do? Just sit here and talk. 
I mean, I did show you all that stuff, but it would have been really good to... Well, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to like go out in the garage and get some real tools out to get that motor out of there. And first, I want to. And for I do have to go out in the garage and dig out those other motors. I may not want to take this apart if they don't. If they don't uh, want, they're too noisy for sure. Uh, they don't, or they don't run good enough. Like if the ones that I have uh, don't have enough power to go the more out. Then there's then there's no point in taking this out of here. Uh, if I'm going to end up having to buy something. Then uh, I'll I'll just well I still may want this louvers but if I have to end up buying uh, if those um, Braun fans don't work I don't have any one twenty millimeter fans that are not used in a machine uh, and the ones I did I did put in my machine they you know like this you can really feel its air coming off of it it was enough uh, but the ones with the computers. They're just like a high volume, but a very low flow rate. You know, it's not, you don't barely, so you got to really pay attention to tell if anything's coming out of there, you know. But they do work. I, at first, I thought, oh no, when I bought them, I thought, oh, I screwed up, you know, these aren't going to work. But I decided to go ahead and try them because I had, what I had, re I'd read about them and, and that, how they work is by moving a larger volume of air. And so, and, and it was, it was true. It, it, it did they did work these other some of these other ones i look at that have like like what was that those ones he said they did if they really do 54 cfm that's a lot uh, for a for a 120 millimeter fan they may be loud but uh, um but it might be it might be good it might be something i'd want I'm uh, myself turned around here I thought I had my I just started rolling up the table without thinking that I don't have a twisty there I just had to do it let's see I've got lots of twisties but the size right size I'm running low I've saved, always saved my twisties. And, uh, that one looks like it'll work. It's going to come back off the next time I mess with it anyway. Yeah. I like to get one that's long enough to twist around the wire and then make it around the, make it, twist around the wire and make it around the bunch, but that one just makes it around the bunch, so that'll do. I'd really, this is hopefully going to be installed in, in the ceiling of the closet. And it won't need a twisty, because I've actually got some nice little plastic um, wire loom, not wire looms, wire hangers. So, uh, just right for that kind of thing. I had bought them for... Well, I had bought them for that uh, HDMI cable. I was going to, when I originally bought that 30 foot HDMI cable that I use on the server now, years, 10, 15 years ago, I was going to uh, run, I was going to put, uh, mom had her computer monitor, her computer's like over here on one side and then of the room. And then she had a TV that had an HDMI input on her tall dresser that she'd watch from bed, you know, so going around the room like that. And, but I was going to have to go up the wall, over the two doors, and then down to the TV. But then she decided she wasn't really interested in watching anything off the computer, you know, on the TV. So, so uh, I never did it. <coughs> All right. Uh, just messing with stuff now. Well, I'm going to go about time. Um, five hours and four minutes. That's not too long. Nah. All right. Uh, see you later. Hopefully I'll uh, show a finish up on what I end up doing. Some It takes me, it's, we're working in the closet and up over my head. We saw how much trouble it was just to get video of just what I was doing a while ago. Uh, that's why I've kind of just been, that's why I put this up. 
didn't show any. I never showed it installed because it just didn't work out. You know, I had to get another fan in there. So first I left it. I took this down, left everything else in place. Then I realized, well, I've got one screw holding this switch up on the door facing, and it's out. So I just took it out. So I didn't ever get to uh, make a video of, uh, of it installed. But that's okay. All right. I'm going to go talk to you later. Mm -hmm.